Yeah. <laughs> Um, and now I'll so, <laughs> <laughs> so um, hey man, actual play. That's what that's what they're here for. The slice of life. Hearing about tanning your butthole to center your chakrams. All right, what is your character's most frequent or recent nightmare? Is today's faxpiration question. Mm, I'm sure revealing this will have no downsides. Um. While you ruminate on that, would anybody for a point of DM inspiration like to sum up what happened last time on Curse of Thrawn? I feel like it was a decent amount. Um, so let me know if you are you're interested in such a thing. Um, else, I will try my best to sum it up myself. If you're interested, roll a d20 into chat. I know that everybody's so rich now. You got 15 fanspirations or whatever, but I do want to point out that the same man who panhandled all that fanspiration for you, he spends it like it, like he's gonna die the next day. Just saying. So I mean, it ain't I gonna mean, lie. It's true. It's true. <laughs> yeah. I'm not gonna deny it. It's true. It ain't gonna lie. This man wins, uh, wins some money on a lottery ticket. He just buys more lottery tickets. Okay, just saying. Like. There's not there's not any fiscal sustainability happening with this uh, this buku bucks of uh, fifteen fan inspirations. All right, I will try my best to sum up what uh, happened. Up, oh, 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 Darius. Oh man. All right. He wants to live. All right, go for it, Darius. All right. Last time on Curse of Strahd, we were still by, or I guess the remnants of the Valakai. Uh, Vistani camp uh, waiting on Luke to come back after we sent him to Valakai uh, he did come back but with a frog he found thought so at least that was something um, but he didn't get our stuff so we sent him back in there uh, when he did get inside I guess he ran into old man drunk man Richard and brought him back out along with our stuff so we send them in to get our stuff he doesn't get it he goes back in he gets it but then he comes back with something else this guy um but the old man wasn't what he uh what he was shown up to be I guess he's a functioning drunk I mean that's probably the best way of putting it um but he seemed quite interested in us, or I guess what our next plans were, and if we were going to fight the vampires in town. It seems like he was maybe trying to egg us on, and that he would fight alongside us, but there's, there's no world where we get into that fight and we just don't start losing people. We ain't ready for that. So... For the meantime, we uh, decided that we were just going to leave Valakai and hope for the best. Uh, we gave warning to the Markovs, we gave warning to this guy, I think he was going to give warning to the uh, Father Lucian, but I mean, if we go in there it's just going to be nothing but blood. So we left for Jenny Greenteeth, or wherever the hell she was, apparently in the woods somewhere off the roads. Uh, took a little while for us to actually get there, but when we did It was in front of this ramshackle hut in the, This kind of clearing of the forest and inside was Ooh, man I don't know how to describe this um, I guess everything you would think a hag looks like and then some um, but surprisingly she was nice, which really threw it off. Um, and she was actually quite helpful in giving us information on a whole bunch of different things. Uh, was able to confirm that myself, Anna, and Mac are all werewolves, or at least starting to turn into werewolves. Uh, the ritual that we need to cleanse ourselves of this. Um as well as talking about the wine uh, winery stones and how they could be used to 
I guess, breaks uh, the Dark Lord's connection to the land. Though, that won't be the end of it. We would actually still have to put the guy down, if anything. So, a lot of info and a lot to think about. But that's where we are now. All right. Yeah. Go. Uh, do you want demon inspiration or do you want a fax version? Where am I at? Uh, I'll take DM to be full up. Okay. All right. And I did turn her into a shop, by the way. So you guys should be able to shop uh, her wares. Um, it was from last, from the end of last session till now, she's been enabled as a shop. Um, it would be Green Teeth Enchantments if you search the actors. Um, I have not tested this, uh, this mod. This is a merchant made using item piles. Um, item piles has definitely been doing the job, but, um, uh, how do I put this? It has crashed on me like three times, like completely crashed my edge brow. <laughs> so, um, mileage may vary, but... Uh, she does have quite a bit of things for sale, and I believe you guys should be able to interact with her and buy stuff. Uh, she's not willing to buy any of your stuff, though. Um, just, just as a heads up. So, are we buying the stuff Let's said we're buying, or are we rethinking that? <laughs> That's what I was trying to ask for in Discord! <laughs> I mean, uh, how much gold oh. do we have total? Did you did you tag me? I'm sorry. Did you ask me specifically? No, this isn't uh, a separate channel. Um, oh, oh, oh! There's a secret channel that I'm not in. Oh my goodness, how scandalous! <laughs> oh my goodness. We can't I don't be, know how to feel about we that. We can't be giving you all our secrets. Um, but no. Are you um, are you saying that sometimes adventuring parties have secret groups that they uh, chat about the game in where the GM can't see? Because me and Dash. Oof. All right, sorry. Just keep going. So if I click on this. What happens? <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you get a pop-up or does it just go through? Yeah, it does. It says, Darius bought the following things from Green Teeth Enchantment. Oh. One hand job. Oh my goodness. No, it says uh, Blade Fire <laughs> times one. Okay. It's starting to get lonely out you... there. Yeah, how'd you find the secret menu? It's incredible. No, I opened um, up the store oh, that's, and I had the It's under soap. It's a subcategory under soap. So, that's... Um... All right. Um, so it's working. That's good. Yeah. Okay. Did it take away your money? That's the important part. Uh, it did. All right. Great. So it's working. Right. Sweet. Um, okay. that was something I guess to ask if there's anything that Green Teeth is looking for, but I guess we need to probably answer the uh, question. Uh, she is always looking for uh, herbs, unguents, reagents, um, things like that. Things that you would uh, find by um, harvesting monsters and um, harvesting plants and whatnot on your journeys. Uh, hitting up rare fishing spots. Uh, all those cool mini games that I built in, but then people were like, wait a minute, we travel half as fast if we're doing these activities? That's never going to happen. And I was like, cool, let me throw the whole crafting system in the trash. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much uh, what she's after. She's after. You just need to find this campaign's Nessa. Right? Yeah. Um, that exists in this place? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, you'd be surprised. Yeah, I mean, surprised. like, if you travel with Strahd, like, I... <laughs> you, you'd be surprised. Um, so, anyways, um, yeah, so she is, uh, yeah, she's looking to buy that stuff. What right. about one vial of werewolf blood? One vial of werewolf blood? Yep. Mm. Not for me, but from something Eric had that the party took from him. Oh, okay. Yeah, let me look up the uh, let me look up the price real quick while you continue uh, working on other stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, did anyone want to answer the uh, facts for a question? Oh, oh shit. shit! My bad. My bad. Yeah, yeah I didn't want to jump too good. far. <laughs> Sorry. I'm so unaccustomed to not being in pain. I'm almost like euphoric this morning. Um. Okay. Uh. All right. Uh. Ayla with an uh, eleven going once, going twice. Uh. Sold to Ayla. Ayla, what is your most recent or frequent nightmare? So, uh, unfortunately, my. Um... Most frequent nightmare has actually come true already. Uh, 
Oh. My fear was being separated from my people, and with what has happened recently, I don't think I will ever be considered or accepted again as a Vistani anymore. So now I must watch my people carry on without me every day. Mm. Mm. Damn. Okay. Um, you may ask the same question of any NPC you've met during the campaign. Um, she will ask, um, Madame Velasco. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, let's see. Man. Um. Mm, all right. Who, who runs the orphanage? I think so. Claudia. Yeah, it's, it's 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 my yeah, yeah. PC. So. Okay, so Claudia Velasco. All right. Oh, her most frequent uh, or recent nightmare um, is that uh, she murdered all the children while they were sleeping. Well, that's rough. Yeah. All right. That was fun. Um. All right. So. Back in yeah, Barovia, am I right? Uh, so back, <laughs> so back in it. I'll change out the misty music. We'll put on Shimoda music. Here we go. If it makes you feel any better, Ayla, at least you won't age. True. <laughs> so you got that beauty thing going on, but the personality. I mean, yeah, she's what could, still what a hideous bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So for one, I'll tell you what the werewolf blood does mechanically. Not a huge help in a low magic, no magic campaign. It can be used as an additional um, component when casting spells that uh, physically alter a creature's body. When used this way, the duration of the spell is extended by an additional 10 minutes. Um, the blood itself uh, for a vial, she is willing to provide um, five gold. Mm. And Anna used that to cook with. Oh yeah, it's okay, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's not getting yeah. sold. Okay, okay. then. <laughs> Plus, you got werewolf blood free of charge right here. <laughs> oh, uh, I'm kidding. So... Oh, yo, you're offering yourself. Okay. Oh, oh no, fuck you. I might as well do that. <laughs> Get rich quick scheme. Have no hit dice every day, but five gold. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's pretty good. When um. <laughs> When... Since, one were since one werewolf can provide 1d2 vials, I'm assuming that each vial would be 50% of your hit point. Uh, so I don't know if you really want to go down that path, Luke. Uh, I but, don't. I mean, but, I mean, if if Anna's hungry enough, now she knows. Uh, oh, no. Get right. this little freak away from me. <laughs> so, um, you guys made it here early in the morning. You've interacted with her. You're buying and selling, but your intention is, I believe, to head to the Wizards of Wine again, and then from there go to Yester Hill, or are you just going straight to Yester Hill? Or uh, you change, change your minds completely and you're going somewhere else? Winery, then Yester Hill. Yeah. Okay. All right, it works for me. Uh, are you ready to depart? Uh, You've done I'm all just, the buying and selling and such that you need to? I'm just finalizing some of the purchases and stuff. Uh, we can only get three blend creams, so who wants one? Uh, you know, you're wearing plate armor. Well, not plate, but heavy armor, right? Oh, his plate is not here. Um, yes. Oh, right. I'm trying to remember. And then waiting for my character sheet to open. I mean, you got a dope-ass armor class. I'm assuming you got something I have good splint. On. I have splint armor and a shield. Mm. I would love plate, but I no, don't. No, I'm saying, yeah. is it is splint heavy armor? Like, is it yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so you give him a straight roll. Yeah, it only lasts for ten minutes. And I have yeah. expertise, so I think I'm going to risk it without it. Okay, right. that's fair. What about Anna? You would take it if you gave her one. All right, you'll get one. Uh, I have a plus five to stealth, but I would very much appreciate having one on me. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, we'll send one to Luke as well. Oh, and uh, for any lore hounds, during the history session last week, the original, or at least the oldest name that uh, people can remember for this region is Sarunos. Um, and then when Strahd rolled in, that warlord that I mentioned, um, he had renamed the land Delmore. And so um, the oldest people, the first people um, in this region, uh, the land was known as Sarunos. And then it became Delmore, and now it is Barovia. So the land has undergone many changes, uh, both physically, magically, and of course, um, the name of the land itself. But very, very few people would even know that. So I think um, only Rod know that. Natives with history would at least know that the region was called Delmore before it was called Barovia. It is doubtful that any, except for the um, the first folk, would remember that it was called Sarunos. But the fact that Jenny Greenteeth remembers that it was called Sarunos would be significant. So Strahd doesn't even know it was called Sarunos. I, was cannot, I cannot comment on what Strahd does and doesn't know. Everything that you think you know about Strahd is conjecture and your own opinions. Which uh, can be very dangerous. Uh, All right. Does Tyrion got any money on him? I think you're the only person I wasn't sure about. I have nine gold. Okay. I gave you 90 last week. I have 99 gold. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you want to buy anything extra? Uh, I can leave that up to you. There's 25 left. That was in the cart. I was just going to buy a healing draught, and someone can take that. Just so they have uh, a heal yeah. on them. Let's... So I've got apparently 99 gold now, and there's 25 there. I am the the alchemy crafter one, so I can use the healing draft as a base to make more stuff. I believe is how that works. Oh, uh, the healing, yeah, the healing droughts are like step one to making a basic bitch healing potion. Like you right. have to have the base for the basic bitch healing potion. So we might as well buy like that would let us buy four. So we might as well do that. And then, so I'll use all 99 of mine uh, so that I don't have to carry it. And then one of the, the one that's left, and we'll buy four of them. Okay. Uh, it's 50 electrum pieces. That's 25 gold, essentially. Um, you can add that to your sheet and you can buy the healing draughts. So I'm down to two Electrum. And I'm pretty much good on my end here. The only thing I'm debating is if I want to make poison, because I have to spend 50 of my own just to make one. But Jenny sells it for twice that much, so worth it if we think it's good to poison somebody. Yeah, poison is garbage in 5e. Yeah, it's, it's, too, it's too deep <laughs> if they fail a I mean, con save. Wrong. So if we find a magic user, I can throw a dagger and, you know. Well, that could a, be nice, yeah. It's an extra 2d8. But is like, there an a, a item for the healing draft? I can't, I can't find it. Uh, um, it should be on her sheet. If you buy from her, it'll just, you know, like, it'll okay. show up on your sheet. Because she's a store now. Yeah, it's, it's by alphabetical order. Yeah, and you can also there should be a search bar at the top too. Do you guys yeah. see that as players? Yeah, the I search bar. Okay. Mm -hmm. Crash, are you good with if I use my poisoner's feet to spend fifty gold to make a uh, poison? It'd be the I same mean, basic bitch one. Yeah, I mean you'd still need to make the checks and everything to to build it. Oh, but... do we? Yeah, that's uh... we have a, we have a whole cra crafting system. 
Oh, I was just hoping the feet would say that because it just says you spend it and you. Um, no, like this is this is like you know so, the you gateway think? into into this. Yeah, yeah. Got Remember it. last week I said that you would need to declare yourself as one type. Of yeah, that's right. Alchemist. The alchemist. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So I'll wait till camp activities then. No worries. Okay. All right. Oh, I guess it's, does she have the Alcahest book? <laughs> uh, does Jenny have the Alcahest book? That's a good question. Hold on. I would assume so, being the best uh, in the area for that training. Uh, let's see. Crucial Strahd Crafting. All right. Uh, Alcahest focus on destructive mixtures full of entropy and disruption. Typical products include uh, poisons, corrosives, explosives, and flammables. Awesome. Um, let's see. Ayla just became that kid that has all the cherry bombs at school. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. Uh, let's see. Novice uh, alchemy generalist. I think you guys, as a group, have that book. That one we already. have, yeah. Okay. You want the Alcahest book. Uh, let's see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she would have it. I'm not seeing it in my uh, folder, so I'd have to put it together for you of what's included. Okay. Okay. How much do you want me to... Uh, I can fork over the money. Uh, now. It would be... I mean, books are, books are pretty pricey in this setting. Yeah. So it's it would 50. be... Yeah, it would be 50 gold. Oh, well, that I can do. Uh, right. How do you want me to give that to you somehow? Just delete it off your sheet. Oh, that's easy. Yep. Ah, uh, here we go. Here we go. I found the folder. It might actually be in there. Uh, let's see. Crafting recipes. Uh, uh. Blacksmith, apothecary, generalist, tincture, tinker, tealer. Uh, nope, it doesn't look like I have the that one made. So I'll work on that and get it to you. Thank you, sir. Um, yep. Oh, sorry, I got really quiet because I'm I'm making it. But if, if you guys see me for a thing, I am here. Uh, oh, so. I just oh. Need to review the crafting system. Figure out how I'm making potions. <laughs> We're uh, leaving Mackenzie and Izzy by the winery, correct? Uh, Darius. Yeah, they were safe last time. Darius turns to look at Mackenzie. <laughs> you want to go up there? I assume not. All right, good. Make things easier for us. It takes eight hours to brew a healing potion. What the fuck? Yeah, that's why they charge you so much money. Because they have to work to make it. What, do you think this is a vision game where you just combine the two things together and it magically turns into the thing you need? I mean, there's usually a swirly animation, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, guys, I'm there sure are... that Foundry 10 can support swirly animations, crap. Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, there are actual mods that are like, yeah, you you get an interface and you drop one item from your character sheet and another item from your character sheet and then, like, spits out uh, an item if there's a combo for it and stuff like that, but... It's a lot, though. So. And I hadn't really seen anybody, like, trying to do much crafting. So I was like, eh, I guess we won't worry about it. So, uh, I know how to do that when people keep dying. Who can actually do that? <laughs> well, I guess. I mean, maybe they wouldn't be dying if they were crafting. Hmm. Hmm. Just saying. Uh, let's see. So Apprentice Alkahest, you can make... Acid, Alchemist Fire, Alchemist Frost, Bottled Lightning, Flesh Eater, Basic Poison, and uh, Tongue Tie Tincture. 
those are the recipes that are in the Alkahest uh, Apprentice book. Sound good. Okay. Um, I will go and start looking up the recipes for them and putting them into the book. I am here 100% for whatever you guys need. Just, again, tell me when you are you need something or are ready to go. But it sounds like you guys are doing some preparations and planning. Okay. So, since we're going to fight druids, what's the best way to deal with them and their kind? Not let them cast those spells on you. Yeah, that sucked. Although, thinking back and looking at my inventory, I still have this arcane search in my. Oh, yeah. I don't think that I don't think we did that. Mm -hmm. A what? The Arcane Surge, uh, it was a boon, I think. Uh, it was a complication where the next the next magic that got cast would be a wild magic surge. I just so have it on my character sheet. So we're <laughs> just betting on that? Oh, I think that I think that already... Oh, wasn't that during the Druid fight, though? Didn't that already play I out? Think it, I, I, I don't remember if we yeah. actually used it or not. No, I don't think uh, we ever did. Oh, okay. so I just well. got big-ass Blight cast on me, but I don't... I don't remember anything else going. All right. Well, we'll bank error in the world's favor and just get rid of it for now. So. Yeah, I think that's fair. <laughs> okay. Someone somewhere has probably cast magic since then. Um. I mean, what we face at the winery, those druids, those, what was it, hunters, and those berserkers, humanoids are going to be annoying. Is this conversation happening within earshot of Jenny? Because as a businesswoman, she will probably try to upsell. I mean, probably. I guess. Yeah, yeah probably. Okay. Uh, she says, uh, the druids, their leader, their tree, and their minions all hate one thing more than anything else. Fire. And she motions to the uh, shelf full of alchemist fire. Ah, so it was good that I picked up at least two of those things. Mm -hmm. um, I can deal with the casters if I get close enough. You said their tree. Is there something special about that tree? Oh, yes. Uh, the tree, the Gorthius tree. It's a living thing. Evil. Personified. In a tree form, don't you, you? You can picture it, a giant tree. Its bark, like the scabs of a wound. Its flesh, oily and black. Its limbs, t tentacles that want to reach out and choke the life from you and drink the blood from your corpse. So this thing is like sounds more like a monster than a tree. Yeah, all trees are alive, and all living things can be monsters with the right intent. What happens... What would happen if we were to set it ablaze and destroy it? Oh, that tree is ancient and evil. It has been destroyed many times. And it always comes back. You would have to dig it up from the roots. Hack them to pieces, burn them to ash, and salt the earth that it might never grow again. But such a deed would truly be a fated encounter. <laughs> Why is she stomping and, her foot so hard? <laughs> and you and you see and you see above her head, uh, faded encounter. But the words in faded are all capitalized and glowing with gold light. Does she have a shovel? <laughs> who who wants she to says, uh, and Then she says, she says it would be quite a milestone in someone's adventuring career. Mm. Alas, none are up to the task. For the tree would call out, and all manner of evil druids and their kin, and plants 
hungry for flesh would come to its call and its defense. What if, <clears throat> what if someone just had like a small piece of that tree, maybe? Hmm. Like the one you're carrying, the golf staff right there, that one. Yes, yes, like that. <laughs> um, well, once the tree was destroyed, all such things would probably wither and die. Well, how would how would one get rid of the staff if they wanted to? If you don't want the staff, simply destroy it uh, with the will of yourself. Just crack it upon your knee. Oh, it doesn't reject reject its powers. Doesn't like require something special. No, I, I don't think so. I, I don't use such evil. I mean, good. But I just I don't know. It was we found Each it on some. Each time you use the his staff, you risk losing more of yourself to its evil. And you don't want to be like that now, do you? I do not, which is why I haven't used it. Because you're mm. not the only one that's that said something along those lines. I just, it was it was some magical artifact we found on some head hunt and drew it. I just, I figured there'd be some special thing we had to do to ah. destroy it. Well, that's impressive that you have rejected its power. A lesser man would have given in to its promises of power, an easy route to magic and strength it could provide. Well, if The Walking Dead has done one thing, it certainly not make things easy on ourselves. <laughs> oh no, he's, he's, he's being very serious about that. They have done a lot of difficult things. <laughs> All right, peanut gallery, no one asked you. It is good to hold on to yourself. What good is power if you lose who you are to gain it? You stop being the person you were, and you simply become a vessel for that power. You think that the power is a tool or a weapon that you control. But often, it is the opposite. Thanks for the advice. We'll try and keep that in mind. So do we think we uh, have enough uh, fire and things to let us go uh, silently? Mm, no. Um, what are those things that writhers use? Um, Molotovs. I don't know if we can make some. I mean, that's that'd be some more firepower. I mean, those, are, those are pretty easy to make. In uh, OOC, um, they do exist. I have them. Um, oh, you shit. can craft. You can craft them pretty easily, but they are very dangerous <laughs> what else is, what else isn't <laughs> i mean uh, more so than like alchemist fire these are wildly unpredictable mm -hmm. but they do exist well we need alcohol and i guess we're going to the winery maybe they have some shall we let's go um, so I'll tell you what I do mechanically. You can decide if it's worth the time and the effort. Um, Does it deal this fire jank damage? Yes. <laughs> this, this janky homemade firebomb is dangerous and unwieldy to use. As an action and a bonus action, you can ignite and throw it as an improvised weapon. Um, on a hit, each creature within 20 feet, basically a fireball, of an exploding Molotov cocktail must make a DC 10 dexterity saving throw or take 1d10 fire damage and begins burning two for 1d4 rounds. On a successful save, the creature takes half damage and doesn't begin burning. A creature can end this damage by using its action to make a DC 10 dexterity check 
uh, to extinguish the flames. And since it's a dexterity check, they can use acrobatics or sleight of hand if they want. Um, on a miss, the Molotov cocktail lands 1d3 times 5 feet away from the intended target in 1d8 random direction. On a natural 1, the cocktail explodes in your hand. Thankfully, we have so much fan smoke. Am I right, guys? <laughs> Am I right? You're not wrong, actually. Um, and I'm pretty I... sure only... Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was, I was going to say, I'm pretty sure only Darius can actually use them. I mean, anyone can use improvised weapons. improvised weapons, but like I, have, yeah. I would have the better chance of using them. So mostly you, then. <laughs> I mean, Which is yeah. a good thing. I mean, yeah. I mean, that gives me some ranged options because I really don't have any. Other than just tossing random shit. Now, to make it, you need very flammable alcohol, which the winery is not really going to have. Wine is super not flammable. Um, just, you know, to remind everybody. Um, now, they probably would still have some on hand, um, and you could probably buy some from Jenny because she would have some for making um, potions and, and whatnot. Um, the price per Maltov is uh, 25 gold because of the scarcity of nice, strong, flammable alcohol. Um, it is easy enough to make, though. It's a single crafting check, so it takes, you know, less than an hour and one successful crafting check. So we can buy a Molotov from her or the alcohol oh, she, for it? She, she would never make such a dangerous item. She's a very good and responsible person. <laughs> so we can buy the alcohol then from oh, her? Oh yeah, she would sell you the ingredients. But she wouldn't, she would feel bad uh, selling a product that might blow up in your hand. So how much is it for the ingredients? Is that 25 gold? Is that what it was? Uh, let's see... Uh, but yeah, generally, generally the way they have it set up is you're crafting to essentially, um, have access to the items yourself without having to find a vendor for it. And then if you have materials that you have harvested, you're saving money if you have those materials already. Does that make sense? If you don't have any of the materials you need, you basically end up paying full price and having to craft it, which is... The, the harvesting part of the crafting system is you're supposed to be going out and finding the stuff which allows you to make it cheaper 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 because you don't need to buy any of the ingredients yeah um I, I say we buy one so she accepts trades I do have 12 gold on me okay. does anyone want to pull up their gold together and buy one uh I got two electrum I got, I got gold left. Um, mm -hmm. I can give you six. Let's see. You said you had 12 and then 25. So she says, what, another 13? So six, I can give you 63 and we can get three of them. Oh. Oh, shit. Good. And then, and then I have two gold left. <laughs> I mean, maybe we'll spend none, the money. But... We're not going to use it when we're dead. <laughs> yep. Right. Exactly. So, yeah, so uh, she'll give Eric 63 gold, leaving me right. two. Oh, Ayla, Eric's dead, remember? I'm so sorry. She'll give it to Luke. <laughs> no, no, it's all right. It's all right. Oh, it's painful. I'm sorry. I mean, it has to be. You killed him, after all. Damn. Too much? I mean, it's between no. you guys. <laughs> <laughs> um... So this would be essentially Ayla's wheelhouse of, of making this. Uh, so Ayla, um, I would say for the purposes of this, you could just give me uh, slide of hand checks real quick. But remember, it's gonna be an, it's gonna be a little, you know, it's gonna take time to craft them. So sure, um, if you want to wait to do it, you know, on, on a camp uh, or a long rest, that makes sense. If you want to do it right now, it will delay the departure of the group. Probably uh -oh. wait until we get to camp. Yeah, sounds okay. good. All right. All right. Sounds good. But you have purchased the ingredients to make three. Got it. Um, This is like raw ass, like 
very flammable alcohol that you have purchased. Um, if you drink this, y you would be alcohol poisoned pretty quick, uh, or drunk uh, even quicker. So this and is this is yeah. that wood grain that you use to strip off like paint and stuff. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, and, like this is yeah chemical alcohol essentially. Throwing these would be an improvised weapon, right? Correct. So, yep. so Darius would be the best one to to utilize these in combat. Is that right, Darius? I have that right. I have proficiency with improvised weapons. Yeah. Okay. Um, which I think though are still dexterity based, if I'm not mistaken, because it's a thrown well, they are, object. They, they are thrown. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, I still I can still add my proficiency bonus, but if someone has a high dex, they could still use it. They just want to use. I mean, I, I I got a high dex. <laughs> so like so. either one of us could use it, honestly. Okay. Okay. Maybe we diversify then. Like I'll take one of them. Or, you know, you take two. So like yeah. Because I know you can probably still use your bonus action for other stuff if you want. Mm. All right, so I, I, so yeah, let's let's get ahead on. Uh, let's see. Throwing weapons by default use strength. If your weapon has both uh -huh. the throw and finesse property, you can use the finesse property to make the attack with dex. Yeah, that explains and, my daggers. Uh. And the thrown property to make the attack at range. Oh well, then well, they're all Darius, then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, never okay. mind then. These things need to be uh, retooled. Well, they don't have finesse on them. Um, the uh, the Molotovs. They are definitely not a finesse. Right, right, weapon. right. So they're using my yeah, yeah, strength, yeah. which is high. Mm. Um, but okay. So my calculation for my throwing. Okay, so that's actually correct. And then, okay, that one's correct. Okay, cool. Hey, Crash, I'm sorry. One other quick question. Looking at the poisoner mm. feet, the. DC and damage is different than the poison listed. Is that because of the feet or? Um, wait, the question is what? What are you so, asking? So basic poison is a DC uh, 10 and a 1D4 for damage. Yeah, but yeah, on yeah. Poisoner feet, it says if I poison a creature, it's it's a DC 14. Yeah, power. yeah, it's, oh, it's overriding it because okay. no, yeah. one, no one would ever take the poisoner feet. So, <laughs> yeah. Hey, I didn't say it was ever optimized. Okay, no, no, I, ap I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Uh, I mean, in those cases, it's usually the specific rule trumps over the general one. Yeah, let's see. Uh, improved Poisoner. Increase your dex or intelligence by 1, max 20. When you make a damage roll that deals poison damage, it ignores resistance to poison yep. damage. That's cool. You can apply poison to a weapon or a piece of ammunition as a bonus action instead of an action. You gain proficiency with the Poisoner's Kit if you don't already have it. With one hour of work using a Poisoner's Kit and expending 50 GP worth of materials, you create a number of doses of potent poison equal to your proficiency bonus. Uh, once applied to a weapon or piece of ammunition, the poison retains potency for one minute or until you hit with the weapon or ammunition. When a creature takes damage from the coded weapon or ammunition, that creature must succeed at a DC 14 constitution saving throw or take 2d8 poison damage and become poisoned until the end of your next turn. Okay, so since you have the poisoner feet, um, you have a secret recipe, essentially, which is it takes only one hour, but it is 50 gold worth of materials. So okay. you have that basic poison that you had to make and everything else from the alchemist uh, novice list and this secret recipe here that you don't even fail at because you just spend one hour and 50 gold and it works. Okay. And that poison is a contact poison with a DC 14... Um, 2d8 damage and poison status More so that's yeah that's what's going on there yep so that essentially comes with its own fail safe yet slightly pricey um poison oh hey, that was more money <laughs> yeah money all right well i mean she's willing to buy stuff if you if you go out and get monster parts and plants and shit she'll, I mean, she'll buy them we're about you. to go destroy a tree so <laughs> yeah and if you're into grave robbing allegedly um, Yester Hill's gonna have a lot of, you know, a lot of graves and shit to, to rob them. There's that. I mean, awesome. what could possibly go wrong in Halloween land when you rob graves? So. <laughs> Nothing. That's the answer. <laughs> oh, okay. Awesome. I mean, is that so, a problem? Any other things before you head out? I'm good. Good. I'm good. All right. So. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. All right, I guess you wouldn't hit the salvage road just yet. You'd have to get through the forest, but it's all good. Uh, let's see. I can close these down now. 
and I can go and close this down and there we go all right so as you guys head out um i do need a survival check from someone if there are two people with proficiency survival uh they can each roll or one person could roll with advantage um this is to determine if you get lost going through the woods or not um i'll give tiernan an advantage because i'm also proficient all right uh so tiernan give me uh wisdom survival all right here we go Mm, mm, mm. Okay. So, uh, after two hours of walking through the woods, you guys are still in the woods. Um, there is, again, no, no discernible sun. Um, the day is, uh, overcast and rainy. Um, there's no such thing as the boss growing on the north side of trees in a demi plane. Um, so, like, this is not your fault, Tiernan or Luke, but you guys are lost. Can we at least retrace our steps back to uh, Green Tees? It would uh, be it would be a survival to do that. Uh, it would also be a survival just to find your way out of the woods. Um, true. It would be a lower DC to bat to to follow your trail back to where you came from, though, if you wanted to do that. Honestly, I say we just find our way out the wood um, woods. We'll be spending more time going back and then trying to leave again. Yeah. All right. Uh, end eventually, right? Well, you're right. the one leading the way. So go ahead and give me a uh, new survival check. Remember, unit is at advantage. All right, all right. Uh, you get your bearings, and uh, you realize that you had almost gone completely uh, uh, back to um, Valakai. You you were so turned around when you exit the woods. Uh, looking around, you get the sense that you are on the northeast part of the woods, um, which is the opposite of where you need to be to go. Uh, here, I'll show you on your map. Uh, so when you guys exit, you find yourselves here. Oh, it's not doing a uh, shift click for me. Yay. All right, let me try again. Uh, here. Uh, you guys were trying to just exit over here. Uh, this would be marking where you started, which is the very center of these woods. Um, so you can either try to cut through the forest again, or you could walk all the way around. It will add a bit of time to your journey. May as well take the road. At least it's safer. Yeah. All right. Uh, at this point, you have already traveled for four hours. So that would push you about three in the afternoon. Okay. Let me check some stuff here to adjust the travel. I rolled your travel ahead of time, uh, thinking that you would, uh, you know, make all your checks because I believe in you. Uh, let's see. Aw. Yeah. Uh, At least one right, of us so, does. <laughs> the power of positive thinking, I've heard. All right. So I'm assuming, well, I got to ask, um, do you go north around the woods through werewolf territory or do you head back to the crossroads where you all nearly died to werewolves and then go south which would be a longer journey let's take the safer approach and just go to the crossroads sounds good to me all right that's going to add extra miles but okay so you head back to the crossroads and then you go down and over uh, you will see off, you know, perhaps in, in the very speck of the distance, um, the ruins of Argon Vostal uh, along the southern road. And... Alright, that would be a new journey of... Oof, okay. A new journey of oof indeed. Alright, let me get the travel calculator real quick. Alright... 
So, doing a fresh calculation, looking at your map um, and all that, you realize that you getting turned around like this, um, your journey is going to take um, 10 hours of travel uh, to get there, with you guys going back to the crossroads and then going uh, around. So, let me roll some encounter checks real quick. I will take the ones that were already generated earlier and subtract them from the ones that we have to roll now. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Let's see. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, that's not too bad. Okay. All right, I'll take you over to a map. Um, with about two hours of travel or so, you guys would reach the crossroads again. So I'll take you back to that goddamn Luna River crossroads map. Uh, when you arrive, you would see that there are... Um, there is a party of six... Uh, scouts. So let me throw those out real quick. Okay. And oof. Let's uh, let's get rid of all these uh, dead werewolves. That's uh, and this dead guy, 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 this dead lady. Jesus. All right. Uh, this dead horse and uh, this dead girl okay all cleaned up um, so as you guys are heading from the north to this um, sort of crossroads uh, you do see that there are some scouts and um, or, or hunters I guess you could say and with them are two hunters that definitely have name tags they seem to be heading uh, back towards town and they have a sled behind them with a bunch of uh, wolves uh, dead wolves on it as well as a very big uh, elk uh, so seeing you come down the road towards them uh, let's see why aren't you pasting more guys for me alright whatever I'll drag them out manually All right, so seeing you guys heading south towards the um, the intersection, they will stop and they will draw their bows defensively. Um, these look like Druid faction, but they are just um, wearing normal like hunter gear kind of thing. Um, and those of you who have kind of paid attention in town, you do recognize uh, probably one or the other of these hunters who are frequently seen uh, together drinking at the at the inn. Uh, one of them calls out to you and says, uh, Who goes there on this late afternoon? Uh, because at this point, yeah, it would have been... You got out of the woods, then you traveled two hours. So yeah, it'd be about five in the afternoon at this point. The Walking Dead. Ah, you come from the north. Um, what was your business, if I might ask? Getting lost. Ah, I see. Uh, that is an unfortunate thing. Um, my friend and I, we are quite skilled with this region. If you're ever in need of a guide, uh, we are always open for business. Uh, and they smile, and it is the smile of, we like money. How um, much? Oh, they, they, they say, um, oh, uh, depends. Um, what are you hunting and where do you want to hunt? Uh, hey, you four, uh, cover us. Uh, they say as they get closer to you guys. 
And you see their four lackeys are like, mm mm. Um, at the moment, we're just heading west. Okay. Uh, you guys want to help me out with this name? Yev Yevgeny, I think his name is. Uh, Y E V G E N I. I think his name is Yevgeny. Sounds about right. It sounds good. To yeah. Me. All right. Yeah. So yeah. So Yevgeny, uh, as you approach, he says, uh, "I am known as Yevgeny uh, Kroshkin." Uh, and this is uh, Zoldar uh, Zoldarovich. Uh, we are the Wolf Hunters. You may have heard of us. And when he says that in a funnier campaign with memes, there would be a cutscene with like an HGTV learning channel style like show intro of the two of them being Wolf Hunters. Um, but that's not the kind of campaign this is. Like they're back to back arms crossed. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then just like random B-roll footage of fucking wolves like howling and shit like that. And then them driving in their truck, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but they wait for the impact of them declaring themselves the wolf hunters. You guys were at the tavern, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, Zaldar, uh, says, uh, <clears throat> and he nods his head. And Yevgeny says, uh, yes, uh, we are the best of friends, and uh, we enjoy our drink uh, after a long hunt. Uh, it is a bit of the egg on my face, for we had hoped to make it back in time for the festival, so that we could bring this great bounty uh, and sell it on uh, festival day. Sadly, I think we missed it by one day. Uh, it's probably best that you did. What do you mean? From what we heard, shit's not good there. The man looks really concerned, and as does Zoldar. And Zoldar uh, gives him a look, and Yevgeny says, uh, Do you have any more information? You see, many people think that Zoldar and I are lovers because of how strong our friendship is and how unashamed we are to hug and uh, encourage each other. But we both have families waiting for us at home. Are they in danger? So you guys just have a bromance. There's nothing wrong with oh, that. Oh, the strongest, perhaps, in all of Barovia. Um, and the four um, interns just nod. They, it's true. I'd like to get at least a, a vibe check on these two guys, just if they're seeming yeah, genuine sure. before I start going any further. All right. I will roll either a persuasion or a deception for each of them. I gotta ask, when I roll a check, does it tell you what check I'm rolling? No. Nope. Or does it just say... Nope. Crash Dude, gem, probably roll some dice. And then bunch right, of question cool. marks. Excellent. Oh, man. Yeah. First of all, Darius. They are on the up and up. These are some legit, like, honest businessmen. Secondly, Zoldar... Zoldalvich, uh might be the greatest wolf hunter you've ever met in your life not that you've met a lot of wolf hunters but there's just some animal magnetism some real confidence in this guy's uh, posture his stance oof it looks i mean damn someday maybe you'll be that cool sounds like they're two upstanding gents <laughs> <laughs> uh anybody on looking uh with your passive insights you get the same vibes that that these are these are just two skilled hunters who are doing their part and trying to make a life in horror land. Uh, they're just gonna look at the party and be like, eh. Well, uh, Yevgeny says, "I must apologize. I cannot take on any more work until I am sure that my family is safe." All right. Well, then you better hurry. Darius will walk up to him so that he's uh -huh. close to both of them. Yeah. From what we know, whatever protection that was around the town, it's not there mm. anymore. And what? There are vampires. What? Malachi. It's you. What? <sighs> uh, the interns have little question marks popping up over their head, and he shakes his head at them like, don't worry about it. Um, and then he whispers to you and he says, thank you for this knowledge. We must go. If we meet again, know that I count you as a friend. Be safe What's on the What's your road. name again? Darius. 
Darius. Thank you. All right, let's go. Double time. I want to make it before the sun sets. Uh, you hear groans from the uh, the interns, but they start dragging that sled full of uh, dead wolves and uh, elk uh, as quickly as they can towards town. Might have just got Wolfback Mountain killed there. Oh, <laughs> was any of them false hope necessary? You should have just told them the family are pro is probably dead. Oh my gosh! <laughs> like when you say that, Mackenzie says, "What makes you think their their family would be dead? What does their family have to do with uh, the the Baron and everything? They're not these guys probably don't, aren't mixed up in politics. But they're probably casualty. What? <sighs> Uh, Mackenzie looks like she's gonna she's gonna throw up, and she says, "I am so full of guilt right now. I don't know if I could function." Hey, it's all right. We don't know if they're dead or not. I mean, all we what? can ho all we can do is hope that they at least make it back and find out what's going on. Wish the best them the best of luck. We have our own shit to deal with. If we see them again, well. Maybe we can deal. With, we can work out something. It, it looks like saddened like by actually you nice people. Uh, yeah. Like, like they, they they just seemed like like guys just just trying to trying to survive. It was yeah kind of refreshing after everything, right? Yeah. That, but, uh, around. that is one of the things I like about the random encounters in this campaign is like they're not all terrible um, so I guess there's that a little bit of levity yeah I mean there are slice of life encounters where people really do live here and are trying their best but it's not going so well uh, or and you look at a woman and get the black spot and, you know, die. Yeah, uh, there's that too. There's that too. And uh, if, you, right. if you become the ruler of this place, I I want you to make it to where all of the random encounters are good encounters. Like this <laughs> one. I'll pack you guys back up and continue traveling, I guess. Um, Luke right. will whisper over to Ayla, did I say something wrong? I mean, I mean, it sounded... You know, practical to me, but some people are more sensitive than others. Mm. Weird. How they lived this long without knowing stuff like this? I mean. Uh, so, you travel another. Um, you tell me when you want to stop for the night. Uh, you've already traveled six hours, so I'm assuming you just want to stop at eight, right? You don't want to overdo it. How much longer will we have to get to the winery? Um, eight, getting lost it, gave us you've another. done two you've done two of your ten more hours and you've already traveled four hours today there's just really no chance statistically of making it <clears throat> in one go you will have to camp at some point yeah damn so if you go two more hours today uh that would only you'd only have six hours of travel tomorrow and well. you wouldn't risk exhaustion today uh, start bright and early in the morning. Okay. So All right. Two, two hours will bring you to 7 p.m. You guys start setting up the camp and whatnot, and we jump over to camping rules. All right. I need one person to volunteer as the lookout. Uh, it ended up being something weird last time. Is like ant survival or something? Uh, correct. Um, so everyone's got to make a camp, and if the and they have to roll strength, int, or wisdom survival. There are no other options. You have to do strength, int, or wisdom survival. Again, if you hold down, I believe alt when you click on a skill, it will pop up the mini game menu where you can change all the things associated with your skill check. Whoever is going to be the lookout will be making an intelligence survival check and a wisdom survival check in addition to the survival check to help set up the camp. So who is going to be the lookout? Maybe you want to wait until after you set up camp to see what the DC is going to be. 
Uh, you are camping on the road, and the weather is not terrible, so the DC for this is only going to be a 10. All right. Uh, I to, will do to set a, up the camp. I'll do a, a strength survival for setting up. All right. I already got Ayla's and Luke's uh, and Darius, so I just need... Oh, no, I got Anna's also. All right. Oof. Okay. So, Anna and Tiernan, you were not able to hit the DC-10. Luke, with your natural 20, you can uh, undo the failure of either Anna or Tiernan. Who, who would Luke help? Uh, I would say... Mm, so, what Anna did is for the camp, and what Tiernan well, no, is No, every, everyone is setting up camp right now, but those two are struggling. I'm just, I'm uh, just oh, I'm asking who you would help. Okay, so you have Tiernan. Okay. Yep. All right. So with the one uh, failure, that means all of the campsite activities are going to be a DC 10. That's all that means. So now, who is the lookout? Uh, anybody? I need does, somebody. Does anybody have a good both int and whiz? <laughs> hmm. <laughs> no. I can't help you, buddy. <laughs> I got um, nine right. and ten I'll, uh, respectively on those. Buddy, we rolled for stats, remember? Yeah. Yeah. I, well, yeah, but there's some good ones in here. <laughs> okay. Um, I will I will do that one then. All right. Uh, so I need so to give roll me back. A, back in, yeah. Give okay, me an so int the... uh, survival and then a wisdom survival. The int will determine the difficulty, uh, or whether you have advantage or disadvantage to the um, to the other check. Okay. All right, beautiful. All right, you feel confident that you have a good campsite and nothing's gonna sneak past you, Tiernan. All right, the other four, what do you do as your camp activity? You say that every time, whether it's <laughs> I'm, you or not. I'm, Luke will relax. Okay. All and that's right. just a wisdom check, right? No, yeah, just a wisdom ability check, not even a saving throw, but you're only trying to hit a 10. And if you get it, you get an inspiration. All right. Uh... Oh. Mm, mm. It's rough. It's rough. Okay, um, you're just not able to focus. It's just uh, it's too much on your mind, I guess. Uh, all right, uh, Darius, what is your camp activity? Uh, he's gonna continue working on his arm. Okay. His hand. And you roll two checks. Ayla, what are you doing with the camp activity? Uh, I think she's gonna make, I guess, two Molotov cocktails. All right. Uh, go ahead and just give me, uh, poisoner's kit. Uh dexterity because this is not a very complicated recipe it's more about like you know building it correctly um i would also accept for this just a sleight of hand okay so, i'll do right. that i'm gonna burn right. one dm inspiration on this just to see how the first one goes i would say that how could you screw up making this but you guys know people in your lives that yeah. you know that they 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 start a fire making spaghetti so y you know uh, i feel i do have a bunch of um, DM expiry, uh, inspiration left over from because Reed never mm -hmm. really used it. Well, the think... DC for the Molotovs is only a 10. It's exceedingly easy. You put the alcohol in, <sighs> you, you, you put the you know, rag in in such a way that it's like in but also out. Okay, okay, got it. I but will... you also need to like put enough that it doesn't leak. So, I mean, <laughs> you know, there is. It's a little yeah. chemistry. I will risk it. If I fail, I'll tell you, or you'll see my, my okay. bonus. If I fail, we wake up. Ayla just running around camp on fire. <laughs> on fire. By the way, did you even roll privately the whole time? Oh, I'm uh, sorry. Uh, uh, so, so your first Maltov is passable. Um, okay. yep. You want to use some uh, fans bows on that one? <laughs> you, you, you're, you, yourself, you yourself do not probably know what a Maltov cocktail is, but they describe, you know, the earthers describe it to you, uh, and then Mackenzie draws you a picture of one. So you get a general sense. And if anybody had a phone still, I guess you could look it up, you know, kind of thing. I um, have not touched yeah. my phone right. yet. I will yeah. use, I'll use my fans bow on the second one because I'm okay. nervous. Um, let me mark it off. What uh you yeah, me fax a... permission you mean? No, that's what you I don't mean. Have, you don't have to use the fax mode yeah. unless you unless you fail, so just go ahead and roll it. Oh okay. Fa okay. Fax mode after the fact. Oh perfect. Okay. Yep. 
all right great yeah that one's like perfect there's no leakage at all um you put a little a little bit of wax around the the seal of that one to make sure that there's like less spillage so when the the cloth gets uh lit it's gonna melt through the wax and then go in and cause all the stuff to explode and you know go everywhere you feel very confident about that second one first one looks exactly like the picture she will hand them both to darius and say okay. i'm I'm not as confident about this one. But this one's good. I know it. Okay. I will add those to your sheet real quick. Uh, let's see. Oh, fuck. All right. So this Maltov, we're going to put Maltov and then a question mark. And then the <laughs> other Maltov. Yeah, maybe use inspiration Maltov. when you throw that one. <laughs> All right. I remember the good old days of question mark ammunition in Skull and Shackles. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, no. And question mark potions. Yeah, those were even better. <laughs> uh, all right, so question. There we go. And then I'll add a not question mark one. Okay. All right. Um, You're good. Fuck, I'm so close. Oh succeed at cost on that first check oh cool, shit cool, okay cool. I, have to, I have to hit uh, a dc 20 out of combat stack uh you gain a level of exhaustion all right that gets if this occurs well during listen. a long rest or camp you gain the exhaustion after the rest is completed so you stayed up extra late trying to do this well that gets with my well rested um and then this will be the second check for it this is just gonna be normal beautiful <laughs> That's the second time I've gotten a nat 20 on this. Um, so we said that's two... Two successes if you get a nat 20, yep. So I'm up to six uh, already. All right. Anna, what are you up to? We're going to go tell a story to Tiernan again. Oh, okay. <laughs> Tiernan, she's, she's here. It's and then time. Tiernan was looking around for someone to like join him on watch so he doesn't get too bored. And he was like trying to find Izzy and trying to find Irenia and trying to find Thought. And then Anna comes over and he's like... Oh. All right. <laughs> um, I will send the story to you in the DM, Tiernan, and here's right. my roll. Ooh, those are fun things. Mm -hmm -hmm. Okay, that is a success. Um, you tell a passably good story. Um, all right. This is for an inspo, right? Uh, yes, you, you would be granted an inspiration. Perfect. I am at two now. All right. Um, what is the, without reading the whole story, what is the gist of the story out of curiosity? What is the, what is like the, the book jacket say about your story? The Queen and the Wolf is what it's called. Ooh, okay. Kind of intriguing. It might come out publicly at some point, but the time's okay. not right. Yeah, yeah. Fair, fair. Okay. Um... With that, everybody settles in to sleep, and I have to roll eight random encounters. All right, here we go. God damn it. That, uh... You're going to keep everybody safe from. You're welcome. Hmm, okay. Uh, let's see. Let's see what happens to you. Oh, <laughs> Okay. All good things. All good things. All good sure. things come to good boys <laughs> and girls. <laughs> That's not happiness to see me. <laughs> okay. So, um. Ooh, yeah. All right. Siernan, you did actually roll very good. So you detect. Uh, let me check what hour this would occur at. Mm. The third hour of watch, so we'll put this around 11 p.m. Um, you see um, in the shadows outside your camp uh, the glowing lupine eyes of three wolves. They, uh, they look at you with uh, what you recognize now as a very keen intelligence, and they seem to be sizing you up and uh your fellows excellent mm -hmm. 
Um, was there the last time we fought werewolves in wolf form? Was there like a like a size difference or a coloring difference or anything like that to tell? Well, the wolves of Barovia are quite large. Um, they uh, they're definitely like mastiff sized. Um, so no, it was it's been very difficult to tell the difference. And keeping in mind also that you know they they lose all of you know they have to get fully naked to transform. So there's right. no there's generally no like indicators via like you know cool bangles and shit like that that they might be wearing in in wolf form. Um, I am going to. I want to make sure. No, they they, they, they have detected they have detected me. you detecting them, right? Like you get okay. the feeling that you noticing them has given them pause. That if okay. you hadn't, they might have maybe, you know, tried to savage everyone while they're asleep. All right. Not knowing if these are wolves or werewolves, uh -huh. I will speak in like an even voice, okay, and say. One of your kind travels with us. Mm. Okay. Uh, give me either a, a persuasion or a deception. I know it's not a deception, so it would just be a persuasion. All right. If you want to use a fancy on that one, I'm, I'm happy yeah, to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's probably smart. Whoa, buddy. Whoa, whoa. You're pretty, pretty spendy with these. You only got 15. Yeah, I, I don't agree with it. <laughs> Do you really? Oh well, it's well, it's too bad. No, it's no, by I, committee. No, no. <laughs> well, 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 we all voted. It has to be a unanimous decision, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's well, not unanimous. It's by majority it, rules. I, 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 it's I'll only let you, majority rules. It's like getting married. If one person objects, we have to stop the whole ceremony. <laughs> I'll let Tierney use it. This it's, one. Oh guy. wow! You oh, son okay. of a gun. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Here we go. Tierney, I just heard from the bank manager. It's been approved. You can go ahead. You can roll it with advantage. All right. Here we go. You ready for my three with advantage? Here it you actually, is. You actually roll pretty good considering your terrible penalties. <laughs> um, when you say that, the, the one in the center uh, looks uh, left and right and the other wolves break off into the woods and start circling the camp. It doesn't seem like they believe you. Uh, what do you do? Do you oh. wait it out? Or do you try to rouse um, it? I... This is a choose your own adventure book, but everyone could die. Right, yeah. I want to yeah, have yeah. my shield and my axe, like, at hand to where I can okay. start banging them together to wake people up if I want to. But I'm going to, okay. like, okay. edge away towards at... yeah. where... Uh... Fuck, his name's not Eric. Uh... So no. is a... Thought is asleep in his uh, his backpack apartment, and I'm assuming the backpack is next to you, like just leaned up against the tree that you're like resting against, or the uh, log. Oh yeah, here. probably. Okay, okay. Um, All right. So I want to I want to back over towards Luke's stuff, and if he has anything oh, okay. loose, I want to like toss it out there so that they can uh, smell it. Okay. Um, so as you do, the the wolf that seems to be in charge watches your every movement. It's crouched. Its back hair is up. It looks like it's ready to fight. Um, and then when you kind of draw its attention to Luke, it lets out kind of a frustrated sort of like snort. Uh, and then it just uh, makes a low kind of ooh, ooh, kind of sound uh, that Luke you hear immediately. Um, and then the other wolves go to it. Um, and then it looks like they're going to head back into the into the forest. I mean, I'm not going to I'm not going to stop them from leaving. All right. They back away uh, but then after them. after Luke sort of starts when he hears that, I'll explain what happened to him and say that I think it's okay now. Mm. Oh. Very well then. I'm just glad they weren't on like the opposing faction of werewolves and me showing them that you were here just meant me immediately have to get killed. I'm I'm glad that part didn't happen. Mm. -hmm. I'm but safety. it didn't, so it's all good. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So, with that out of the way, um, you finish the rest of your rest. Uh, you wake up at, uh, I don't know, 4 o'clock in the fucking morning, I'm assuming, and you uh, head out. Um, you travel 
six more hours that day, and you arrive, because we already pre-rolled all these encounters, at 10.30 in the morning at the Wizard of Wine. Well done. All right. Uh, upon your arrival, um, let me see if anything fucking horrible has happened to them while you're being gone. Oh yeah, that reminds uh, me. Is Mackenzie still missing health? Uh, no. Oh I no, haven't, I haven't rolled stuff. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Bye. Oh, plus, I haven't uh, long rest. Mm -mm. All right, so as you arrive at the vineyard, um, you are greeted uh by excited uh excited children, um. And they go and tell um, the adults uh, that you are here. And uh, before long, um, the the Mardikovs, uh they greet you. And they say, uh, I guess uh, Davian would take the lead here. And he would say, uh, well, let me change up the background here. Hold on. Do one thing at a time, brain. There we go. Yeah, so Davian would say, um, you're back. Uh, what do we owe this pleasure? Sorry, just for confirmation, we get back one hit die on camp, right? Uh, yeah, you can get extra hit dies back by, um... Camp activities and stuff. Camp activities, yep. Okay. Yeah, because even with the healing surge rules, it's not a lot back on a short rest, and that's what camps count as. Okay. You have to be at a sanctuary to get all of them back. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, a short rest, you get your level divided by four. Yep. So it ain't great on a short rest. That's why the um the other camping activities are there to kind of help with that. Yeah. So uh, Davian would look at all of you and say, uh, you know. Uh, you're back. To what do we owe this pleasure? Mm, I wouldn't say so much pleasure at this point. Valakai is, uh, pretty fucked. Mm. He kind of scowls at your potty mouth. We, but, don't, uh... we don't know that for sure. We just know that there were minions of the devil there. Minions of the devil inside Valakai. Where my and son and grandchildren are. Yeah. They, we warned them as, as best we could, but from what we know, I guess bones that are supposed to be protecting the place, those got removed. Yes, and... the bones of Saint Andrew. Yeah, they were removed. They were removed, and they could not have been removed by creatures of evil or darkness. So, who removed them? Do well, you know? Those creatures of darkness must have hired somebody because they weren't there, and we found six vampire spawns in there. In town. Six. Six. Former adventuring party. The cold shoulders, I think, is what they're called. Ah. Uh. Led by a. We know, do we know his name and character? Uh, he said his name was Peterson, some tan-skinned, dark-haired fellow. So I'm going to OOC to Anna real quick. Anna, this is just typical, okay? Men assuming that the the coolest man they met must be in fucking charge. Unfucking real. She didn't hear anybody. She only I'm ever just, saw the jester. Yeah, yeah, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Like, this is an OOC conversation between me and Anna. Two feminists, okay? Uh, but anyways, back to it. Back to Anna it. only saw two men, too. <laughs> yeah. All right. Oh all right, anyway. um, all right. He says, uh, Peterson. Yes, our network is aware of this man. He was a member of the Cold Shoulders, a group of uh, adventurers found themselves here in the mist years ago. Yeah, well, from what everyone has told us, I think there is this guy jester some orc uh a lady in like a what are those things called plague doctor mask um mm. 
some elf looking lady with uh with like a small dragon a female elf in barovia how unusual yeah uh and they said they heard some other voice but i don't think anyone else got eyes on them yes the people you're describing are the members of cold Childers. they had it in their heads that they could um force Strahd to return them to the world. They they traveled uh, to Valakai. They did some work there, but very quickly lost patience. And well, they stormed the castle. And when next they were seen, they were in his service. Does does becoming a vampire, a vampire spawn, whatever the does it does it automatically bend you to his will, or is there some middle step? Are they are they brainwashed or, or tortured? Just gives a look to cheer them. And then she's he 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 looks back over and he's like, oh shit. Uh, well, the word. order of the, the order of the feather has been around for a very long time, and we have studied the enemy. Intensely. There are different types of vampires. There is the true vampire, which is in a way almost a demon of sorts, a fiend. It uh, feeds upon souls more than blood. The children of a true vampire uh, are fiends known as succubi, uh, sometimes incubi used interchangeably. Those mortals um, in times have been um, cursed, or I guess some would say blessed, by a true vampire with vampirism, becoming a noble vampire. Noble vampires can pass on the curse to other mortals, but in doing so, those mortals become shackled to the noble vampire that created them. They can do nothing to stand against them. And if if those then create? They cannot. <laughs> Only a noble vampire can create vampire spawn. So your your Thankfully! Vampire spawn cannot create more vampires, or all of Barovia would be overrun. Your devil. And he says, he says in a way like, how dumb do you have to be to think that vampires could just make more vampires? We'd have infinity vampires, buddy. That's crazy. Yeah, Barovia and then he, he, and he, looks, he looks right at Anne Rice when he says that. He looks right at Anne Rice when he says that. Well, like, in, some, in some forms of speculative fiction, the reason they don't do that is to maintain their food supply. Hmm. It seems like it would only take one or two vampires going crazy, making lots of vampires to cause vampire wars to break out. That kind of happens in Blade. Oh. What is Blade? One of your stories? Y yes. I Tell me a bit about it. One. Um, what? Blade is the weapon that is used to kill the vampires. Yes. Oh. He's also a man. He's a man who is a Who's a, a half vampire. Half vampire, a vampire. Ah, yes. Uh, a vampire um, can, because despite their undead nature, a vampire is the most living of all the undead. They can breed with uh, mortals and create a, a cursed offspring, a vampire, uh, a mortal with some of the abilities and curses of a vampire's bond. Oh yeah, that sounds like Blade. Hmm. Getting back on track. Um... Noteworthy is the damn peer, because of its mortal nature, retains Oops, its independence, even if the damn peer is the offspring of a noble vampire. Which is your what what type of of being is is your your devil here? Is he oh, is he the first type? Strahd is a noble vampire. Don't say his name. Nice. So, if, 
if, if he made this adventuring party, they would be vampire spawn. Yes. And vampire spawn cr can't make vampires. Correct. You understand. I just side eye Ayla. Like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> <laughs> she she looks fact, at you just as confused. In the history of Barovia, there have been instances of other noble vampires uh, appearing and challenging Strahd. Ah, I'm sorry. And challenging the Dark Lord for his, uh, his dominance of the realm. If the Dark Lord were to become aware of such a rival, he would seek them out and destroy them. Interesting. For it is said that uh, to feed upon a true, uh, that is to say, a noble vampire, that would grant you, if you were a vampire, tremendous power. How long and, does this subjugation oh, take? Is, 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 a, is a vampire spawn made by a noble vampire just immediately under yes, their there sway? Is, there is a time period that passes wherein the, inf the inflicted look like they have died. But this is the body going through a metamorphosis. Stop looking at me. Ah, I think that the vampires in Valakai just became a much more pressing issue. Uh, at least much more personal. More personal. Like we said, there's six of them. Um, we so did you come here to get our help against the vampires? <sighs> Unfortunately, no. Even if we did bring additional help, I don't think we would be able to win against them. It would just be sending people to die. We're here for Yester Hill. Ah! You've come here to aid us in the retrieval of the, the stone? <sighs> That's something we did want to talk about. We just came from Jenny. You have gone to see her, the woman of the woods. Yeah, nice lady. She is kind soul. We want to get the wine stone, but Jenny said that that same stone could be used to break Strahd's connect. Fuck. The Dark Lord's connection to this land. She must trust you intensely to have brought this to your attention. I mean, since those stones were part of your family, it's only right for you to at least get a say what you want done with them. Short term, you get them back, your winery can start to flourish again. But long term, maybe we take those, start putting some cracks in the devil what about this you bring us one stone and we bury it back in the earth and defend it it gives the land a chance to heal and perhaps save the crop then if you don't make it at least the people will still have wine but, if you can retrieve the other two, it is proof of your power, your prowess, and your potential. And I will hand the all three over to you, that you may do what needs to be done. I'm good with that. We very much appreciate that, and I, I think that that's 100% something that we can agree to. question is if we have to get the Yester Hill and that's what the den of these faithless yes it is their base of power 
long ago it was the holy site of the of the first people the druids and uh, the Kavani who dwelled here long before uh, men began to war over the land Yasser Hill is where their honored dead were buried and where rituals of ancient power and renewal were uh, performed now it is a mockery a dark and terrible mirror of its former self it is a place of nightmarish rituals of human sacrifice and bestiality mm, sounds great oh. there they patch schemes to reclaim the land from those who would dare to settle it. Hence. This this staff that I have. Yes, that yes. evil and hateful thing. It it comes from their, their tree, is what I've been told from multiple sources. I believe three at this point. Yes, atop their Yester Hill grows a tree of incredible evil. History. I I obviously think we should destroy it, but I was told by 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 the hag, by by Ginny Green Teeth Leaf Teeth, that I could just I could just choose to just break it? Is that oh I didn't no think something of this the power tree certainly not. I think perhaps she meant the staff. No, yes, the, the staff. Hmm. If you have a a soul that seeks to bring about good, that favors light over darkness, then you should have it within you to to break this weapon and resist its powerful charms. Now, it's should I should I break it now or should I break it? There would would breaking the staff somehow weaken the tree at all? Is it connected? No. This is a. This is likely a piece of the tree freely given to those who worship it. It would be as if I had crafted a fine bottle of wine and given it to you. If you were to shatter it instead of drink it, I would be insulted, but it would not bring any harm to me. Is the tree aware? If I if I break this staff, will the tree know that it was not the one they gave it to, or will it assume that, that the druids broke its gift and become angry with them? I do not dare to guess at the the evil mind of that ancient plant. I know only that attempts have been made to destroy it. That it has even been burned down to a charred stump. But it always returns. Jenny mentioned that it would probably need to be uprooted. Hmm. So that it doesn't come that, back. A tree that, that large, a tree that old, uprooting that is no mean feat. It is certainly not something that you could do quickly. And in the time it would take, you would need to deal with all the forces of Yester Hill that would come seeking vengeance. But to do such a thing would truly be a fated encounter. He, he, just he just stares off, off towards, towards Yester Hill. Do you think we can do it? I think you are capable of many things, and more capable than you give yourself credit for. You would need to destabilize the leadership of the Faithless, cast them into disarray, and perhaps during that time, you would be able to deal with the tree. And if you were able to recruit into your service some allies in great number that could uh, defend you as you 
uh, destroyed the tree, that would be best. And he uh, gives you a pain smile and he says, um, the Order of the Feather is small in number. While I could certainly ask, you might find a few willing to help you, but a few would not be enough. Well, you must have connections as well. It, it, can you think of anywhere where we could pick up more of these individuals? To, well, to assist? I don't know how how much of the history you have learned, but long ago, the first folk were one people. The Druids and Kavani of the lands lived in harmony as a single culture. Oh, uh, oh. Green Tea had told us about this, I believe. Yes, yes. What you I... could do is you could travel to the mountains to the south. And when he says that, um, you feel oh, a wet, really you feel, you feel a yeah. wet, yeah, I feel a wet <laughs> hand on your cheek uh, of excitement. And he says, uh, there you could find Kavani who live. He looks left, he looks right. In hiding. They have never stopped hating the faithless for what they did. Long have they waited for a chance to strike back. If you are willing to make the journey and gain their trust with the promise of destroying the faithless, the gulfiest tree, and the restoration of Yester Hill, he makes a he makes a face that says, "Could happen," uh, and he says, "Uh, that would be an offer that they would find hard to refuse." I think that may be our best shot. Honestly, there is and one more. Option. Perhaps we. Hmm? She points to a uh, Luke. Oh, that might be even more difficult. Oh, now you want to consider going into werewolf territory. Look, you can't blame us for being hesitant. Our last encounter didn't turn out so well. True, well, it did. Well, I mean, you're still alive, aren't you? That's one way of putting it. <laughs> Most of them. <clears throat> you're still alive. <laughs> I am, yes. I have this reminder saying that I'm going to be turning into a furry in the next two weeks. The fuck and, the know, furry? I don't know. Something Mackenzie told me about. <laughs> Mackenzie says, what? Because you needed to know. Did I? <laughs> well, yeah. Look, I felt, gu Not I felt guilty. I felt guilty because I convinced him to try to give online dating a chance, and I wanted him to know that there were certain types of people that he needed to just watch out for. That's all. I'm not saying that they're bad people. I'm just saying that. Just be aware might, of. That's actually. They, yeah, they, yeah, they might want different good things. Advice. Yeah. Never mind. I, t I take it back. You're good. Yeah. They Luke like. They leave. have their own culture. You know. I, I just want to make sure that he knew what what that meant in case it came up. Because I mean, I love you, Darius, but you you know a little. A little out of touch sometimes you know you don't really do the social media you know like that's fair luke is just looking left and right wondering what the fuck are they talking about <laughs> mackenzie stirs at you luke and says uh a furry's like a wannabe werewolf where we come from because we i don't think but i'm starting to have doubts i don't think we have werewolves back back where we come from but we have people that would give anything to be a werewolf or a were I don't know, giraffe or whatever. Though so they pretend to be us. Oh yeah, they wear suits and everything. We don't wear suits. I know, you but they literally do. have a wolf on your shirt. Yeah, like your like your cool like uh, mantle. They would wear that as an actual costume. They would dress up like a like a werewolf, or a or a were fox or a were cat or. You know, I think I'm starting to prefer staying in Barovia more and more every day now. Well, you said your your numbers are few. Would you at least be able to get word to maybe Muriel if she can help us track down these Cavani? Uh, yes, yes. Um, 
I could get word to her. She could be here within uh, a day or two if you needed some time to rest. Um, now, you don't have to do everything all at once. If you are feeling brave and inspired and you want to go and retrieve the stone for us, that is certainly a easier undertaking than destroying the ancient evil tree. We... I might as well one and done it, right? Yeah. No, that's a very bad idea. You've heard what he said. I mean, after she... preparation, I don't mean right now. We need I to meant to do it. we should take our time with this. Get the stone. But to destroy an evil tree, that can come later. Unless, of course, you're willing to sacrifice more people, of course. Well, that's why we're, we'd be waiting and trying to prepare ourselves. Because I don't know, if we get that stone, I don't know how easily we'll be able to get back. I mean, yeah, maybe their whole... They'll be in disarray, but maybe they'll just be more frenzied. Well, either way, we're going to have to go up that hill. So let's take our time. Do what we can, do what we can do, and deal with the rest later on. Um, Darius kind of looked at Ayla for a few moments. That one's uh, grandmother is Madame Ava, if you've heard the name. She... Oh, also, also, I misspoke. I misspoke, and I'm sorry, thought, for getting excited. Um, these guys actually live in the northernmost mountains. Uh, so he just uh, said in the mountains, and then thought got excited, and then he said northern yeah, mountains. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, it, it, it is the, uh, yeah, I don't want you to go to the wrong mountains. Uh, they live in the Balanok Mountains, which is the northern mountain cluster um, along, the, along the map, essentially. Oh. Is that, like, where the... And the that's where Wolf Territory was. Uh, I will take you to your map real quick. I think that's no. Wolf Territory. <laughs> no, we're uh, getting stones, right? It is Kavani Territory, as labeled on your map. So it makes sense. Oh, it's, uh, that, so they, it's northeast. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Over there. Oh, so these, these guys up here, the most northeast mountains, like these guys, oh, shit. is where you would... Yeah. Well, we could uh, swing by, pick up whatever that is on our way. Let's yeah, get the stone and uh, then do all of that. <laughs> uh, yeah, now that, that puts a lot of things in perspective now. That's going to be a much longer journey. Mm hmm. Yeah, I was thinking it would just be like here. And it's like, oh, that's not so bad. Um, shit. Now, this mountain down here, um, Mount Gacchus, uh, this is a. For, for full meta, this is a high level area. Yeah. See this word here? Giant territory? Uh okay. yeah, so this is yeah. <laughs> Man. <laughs> so you're saying that uh, that widower he's never getting that flower. I mean, oh yeah, no. I mean, he's oh, too much not, time has passed. I mean he's probably not a widower anymore. No, it's it was two weeks for us. We're probably getting towards the tail end of it, but that's if even if the dude's still alive in Valakai. Yeah, I don't think that's anybody's problem anymore. You might as well just uh <laughs> you, you you can get rid of it, honestly. Yeah, just get rid of it. Um, I mean, apparently there's a flower that cures a lot of illnesses on the mountain, though, so that might be worth remembering. Yeah. So, yeah. Ah, uh, shit. Those people are pretty far north, then. Oh, yeah, from where you guys currently are? I mean... That's easily, like, another, like, four or five days just to get up there. Yeah, let me get... i get you a measurement real quick while you guys if, are if thinking. Took, from where took, you're currently at... If it took us, like, uh, like two days from Valakai to get to here... If you could fly to the mountains, it would be like 70 miles. Davian if, has... If you could fly. But if you're walking, it's going to be a long road. And I'm assuming you'd want to take the road as far as you could, right? Yeah. All right, so I will calculate so a trip. That will also take you through Valakai. So, yeah. You know, it's a crossroad of the region. Essentially, we'd but have I, to get to yeah. like here-ish on the road and then go from wilderness going up. It is 50 miles on road, and then it would be from that 50 mile marker. Hold on. 
Sorry, the map is so cool, but it takes a little while to calculate. Um, I'm assuming you'd want to stay out of forest and mountains if possible, so you'd probably travel over the grasslands. So then it would be about nine miles of grassland, and then uh, it would be another six miles of forest and hills before you hit the mountains. And even then, once you got to the mountains, you'd have to find these people. Yeah. Would it be possible to go via the lake? Ooh. Um, you would. You <laughs> could go via the lake. Huh. I mean, not swimming. Uh, I'm just saying, like, there's boats. You know, like a fisherman hires. Yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. I don't know what the um, fuck's in that lake. <laughs> this is all dependent on whether or not we're doing the the, the tree. Keep that in mind. We don't yeah, yeah. have to do all of it at once. Let's just take our time, please. Um, to give you a to kind of break down what he said into game terms, um, killing the tree, not a big deal. Destroying the tree, tower defense challenge essentially. Like, uh, you would you would need to keep everything locked down long enough to go through the exacting process. Because again, you guys don't have magic. The the very long process of uprooting a massive tree, its root system, destroying the roots, salting the earth, the whole deal. Like. It's not, like, even something we could do in a combat encounter. You would have to have a way to keep all of the um, the Faithless away from the site long enough for you to do it. Otherwise, they would just constantly be attacking you. So I guess it wouldn't even be tower defense. Like, you would have to have a way to be, to be left alone for hours on top of that hill. Uh, well, the thing I was going to kind of bring up was uh, Darius looks at Ayla, then looks at Davian, says that Ayla's grandmother is Madame Ava. Mm -hmm. If he recognizes the name or whatnot, but he still continues. She told us that something we could use against the Dark Lord was at that tree, and that we need the Raven to help us find it. Mm. That's why we're thinking about getting rid of that tree. Maybe we don't have to, but I mean, if that thing's evil, uh, I think can we you, should. Even if we don't, can you can yeah. you share can you share more details with me of what this uh, Madam Ava told you? Uh, yeah, he'll. I think I think he's proven himself. I I I, don't, I have no problem sharing this information with him. She okay. said, and he kind of just looks through something that was written down i'm assuming mac had written it down um this card tells or sorry position two courage this card tells of a powerful force of good and protection a holy symbol of great hope uh it's the five of glyphs and the image was the druid an evil tree grows atop a hill of graves where the ancient dead sleep the ravens can help you find it look for the treasure there mm. It sounds like what you seek is likely hidden in the roots of the tree. Hence, us needing to uproot that some bitch. Mm. That is unfortunate. Uh, he kind of gets like a curious look on his face, and he says, "Um." Did this woman tell you anything else? This sounds kind of neat. <laughs> we have other things, but they're not immediately. That's the only one that's at Yester Hill. Mm hmm. Well, he kind of he kind of says so, but there are others in this same cryptic um, sort of um, cryptic uh, puzzles. It's uh, those cards that Ayla keeps pulling out. She'll uh, show him the, the deck, you know, in like a fan mm. motion. Ah, so you received a reading, but the reading is providing you clues to find things. Yeah. We... And these things you believe will help you against the devil. We're hoping, at least. We spoke uh, with... Um... He, he, lo he looks left and he looks right, and then you can see there's a little bit of eagerness in his eyes. He says, I, uh... I like puzzles and riddles, and maybe you could tell me them. I would... 
We uh, spoke with one of the Dusk Elves. I think his name was Casimir mm. by uh, the camp in Balakai. They're yes, no longer... the leader of the Dusk Elves. A well, tragic figure. Yeah, they're they're no longer at the... Uh, the Vasani camp there moved because of what's going down at Valakai. But in any case, um, we were given... Now, to the best of your knowledge, the Dusk Elves would not move. That was the yeah. Dusk Elves settlement, and the Vistani just uh, go there when they're in town. Yeah, I was saying the camp, yeah, yeah. the Vistani camp is what moved, but the mm -hmm. Dusk Elves... Oh, moved. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. yeah, we were given five readings, and Darius will kind of spit them out. Okay. Um, All but, right. Yeah. Wisdom, courage, strength, alliance, and confrontation. Uh, we spoke with Casimir, and he told us about the ones that would be at the castle. Mm -hmm. Seems like we have two of them that are there. Well, actually, three. Yeah. Whatever we have to, if we face the Dark Lord, we have to do that one. Yeah. The um, Master of Glyphs, the Priest, uh, Davian says this one sounds easy. There is a chapel in the um, in the castle. Yep feels like a likely place i will say he says with a, with a with a glint in his eye he says the chapel can be accessed from the castle courtyard do we have to go to the castle proper well you, that you know there's, sounds dangerous there's like a so... wall around the castle. well yes but there's a wall around the castle and then there's the the castle entrance and then the, there would be the there's an out exterior door that leads into the chapel. Well, it's still dangerous as hell since we have to go to. Everything the is dangerous, my friend. Uh, let's see. Yes, this with the Gulfius tree. Yep, you have the right idea here. And uh, crypt, Mad Dog's crypt. Uh, Casimir had said that. Boop boop boop. Going through my notes uh that the crypt there belonged to like some mad general of the dark lord mm. but that's again that's also in the castle so fun times he uh he does raise a finger and he says but it's in the crypts below the castle Yeah, that's true. Hmm. Strahd's enemy, uh, werewolf. Just point uh, at Luke. <laughs> this one said that his alpha wants us for something. I assume it's for that. I see. Hmm. Oh, here it was. Uh, Mad Dog's Crypt, General Corval Grislek? Grislek? Also known as a Mad Dog, Master of the Hunt. He was a servant of the Dark Lord in his early days. Uh, he also helped in hunting down his Lord's enemies, including the Kobani and the Dusk Elves. Mm. So we know where they are, it's just getting to them that's going to be difficult. So that's why see. the one that yes or hill sounds the easiest, but uprooting a tree that's going to be what a siren to everything around it. That's not going to be fun. Tell me, how long has it been since these folks had thwarted the druids' hold over your occupation? What? How long has it been since the druid attacked and took your place? Oh. Yes, sorry. Um, uh, let, me try, let me check the calendar. Uh, okay. So, it was, gosh, you're already on the 29th. Uh, the druids um, attacked the vineyard on the 16th. It's been about a week or so. Yeah. And then you and then you rescued him, and that that and then you guys left to go back to uh, Valakai. 
and now you've come back here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think at the very these oh. Go ahead. these stones. Well, the, this particular stone that the druids had at Yester Hill. Do you think they will make use of it? Yes, I can't imagine that they would take such a powerful item and not have plans for it. Do you believe you and your family are safe? Being he, close uh, to yes, I do. He chuckles, um, darkly, and he says, uh, no. I don't think anywhere is safe in these lands these days. But where would we go? You you say that Valakai is in danger. Kresik has closed its gates. Sometimes you must decide how you will live and how you will die. Can you make use of the stone yourself? Weaponize it, if anything? I am no um, wizard or shaman. I know that the stone can be attuned to, to grant you some measure of power, but only one person could gain such strength. But the power within the stone can be used uh, by those who understand such things as a power source, stronger magic. So if we were to get the stone, should you attune to it and safeguard it? I think their idea was to plant I, it to make the, their land back to what it was. Yeah, but I'm also afraid if we gave it back to them, there's nothing stopping the druids from getting it right back. Well, we just have to kill the druids then. Uh, to assuage your fears of that, he says, um, if you returned us a stone and we buried it once again in the earth, we would call upon our allies to help guard it from... Uh, falling into the enemy's hands again. We would call home to roost those of the order who uh, seek knowledge and secrets abroad and wait to see the outcome of your fate. Okay then. We have a plan. Do you at least know the layout of Yester Hill? Surely your network can provide, has provided you some information on how to transverse that? I, I know it, but not as well as others. Um, if you're willing to wait for Muriel to return, um, she could guide you. I think that'd be best. I want to just wander in there, not knowing where we have to go. So, are you guys willing to just take whatever downtime is needed for her to return? I'd be willing. Also, I need to get rid of this yeah. winded condition on me. That uh, that should allow Ayla to. She's going to ask Davian something. Um, mm. Davian, you uh know these lands really well since you worked them, yes? Of course. Uh, do you know of any uh, toxic plants? Those that might be uh, poisonous that uh, are nearby? As if, like, if someone wanted to, you know, find some toxins. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, let's see. They have worked hard um, on their lands to sort of not have such things because, you know, kids and animals live here and, yeah. and, and you know, like they like ravens. They don't want ravens to get it or whatever. Um, the worst that you're going to find in his area, in his property, would be like, you know, po poison ivy, essentially. Like, you know, mm -hmm. or, like or, a skin like, irritant. Yeah, not so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's, uh, yeah. Um, however, if you were willing to go out into the neighboring, like, woods and whatnot, or, uh, travel back down the road, that would kind of broaden your horizons of what you might be able to find. 
Mm. Is that out, that's outside the scope of downtime, though, right? Um, I would say that you could do the edge of the forest or the road as um, the region that you're trying to gather from if okay. you wanted your downtime activity to be that. Yeah, so she'll just kind of pick his brain on, you know, what okay. could be found. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, we last seen Muriel at Valachai. Mm -hmm. Yep. Could we try to assume it would take her a day to reach here if she were to fly? It could be one to three days because they'd, they'd have to contact her and then she, if she's available, then she would come back. Now, there, I say one to three days because the, the one indicates that maybe she's coming here by her own accord. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Oh wait, it's, we also it, told her to bring the family, right? No. It's no. it's more likely it's more likely to be two or three days if she's not heading here. I have rolled secretly already, so I'm not gonna tell you what it is, but that's why I'm saying it's gonna be uh, one to three days. We told her just to give warning to Danica and Erwin and, and Valakai that shit was gonna go down, there's vampires and whatnot. What they what they decide to do with that information, that's up to them. Um you can tell Davian to send a message to her that we plan to go to Yester Hill to help with the winery stone issue. If she can accompany us, that'd be great. But she might not be there by the time the message is there. Because it's two been days, a full day. Then after two days, yeah, I mean, leave. I mean, shit, shit happens. Shit happens. But yeah, this is why they invented a whole telecommunications network uh, on, on Earth. Because um, not having information right away, not having the right information when you need it um it's a big deal see also romeo and juliet um <laughs> uh, you know like if they just uh, one text could have changed everything um yeah i'd say yeah. if we wait two days and she hasn't arrived then we just continue onward i say we wait one day and continue onward mm. all right mm. I mean, because if, if, you wait, if you wait one, if you wait one day and she's not back, um, but she does get the message returned, she could always be sent on to follow you. Yes, that works. Okay. In such an instance, they would give you a set of like a short sword and some leather armor, essentially, for her uh, to wear and, and some clothes. If you guys were willing to carry essentially a bundle for her, um, so then she would fly to catch up with you guys if you if you went without her. Yeah, I got space. I can I can hold it. Okay. Oh, same here. All right. Mm. Okay. So, unless there are any objections, it sounds like you guys are going to settle in for um, the night and then into the next day. Um, yep. Okay. So, you have a day of uh, downtime at a sanctuary. So, not only can you gain the benefits of a long rest, but if you have something you'd like to do... Uh, with that time, you could do it. So if you're doing crafting, for example, you can make eight crafting checks. Um, if you are um, gathering stuff, uh, we could go ahead and take care of that. If you're trying to look for stuff uh, nearby. Uh, yeah, that's what I... All right. Are you going to do the road or are you going to do the edge of the forest? I, I like the f edge of the forest idea better. Okay. And she'll go sneaky if that helps. To... Sure um all right so we're gonna need um for this uh, uh hold on let me go grab this real quick oh, it's go away what the hell mm -hmm. okay gathering herbs okay uh forging and picking all right um it takes eight hours to do this and you will make a wisdom survival check um the results will be determined uh on the table below all right wisdom survival okay wisdom survival hmm I uh, can use Faxpiration. Yeah, if you want to use it. Yeah. It'd be a good uh, idea. <laughs> delete that. Uh, is that a D6? It's a D6, four? though. Six. Okay. It's a six, yeah. Okay. Hey. Yeah. All right. You succeed. Um, okay. 
All right. So. Let me check and see what you find. For crafting potions, is it eight hours per individual potion, or can I, like, batch brew? Uh, it's per individual potion. I believe you get batch brewing as you level up in that um, profession. Okay, okay. Yep. Uh, and is there somewhere where I can find the, like, ingredients needed? I thought that there was one, but yeah, I, yeah, there I was looking in the... Well, I looked in the um, crafting recipes apprentice apothecary one, uh -huh. and it just has like the little cutout things, but they don't yeah. really say what needs to go into them. Oh yeah, because they're very open ended. So which one are you looking at? The um, uh, potion of healing, brew, and potion of healing. Okay. Because so the, the potion is so fucking good. Yeah. So the potion of healing, you need uh, a healing draught, a medicinal item, and some fluid. So basically, any any sort of ingredient that you have harvested that would be tagged as medicinal. So any sort of plants that you found or okay, parts I, of a creature, okay. that kind of thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, um, I think for Blessed Brew, it just takes longer. Right. Okay. Yep. And yeah, so for Blessed Brew, all you need is, is water and a medicinal item. So you, this is why you definitely want to be harvesting, like, if you have time, everything you kill. Because everything's going to have parts and pieces on it and stuff like that um, that will be able to help you with that. Uh, Darius is going to continue working on his hand. And let's get mm. another DM for advantage on this one. I'm trying. Ugh. All right. No progress. Uh, actually, hold on. It'd be, what, two checks during this rest? Um, you can do eight because it's, uh, you're doing a downtime. Oh, shit. Yeah. Um, all right. So then that was just the first one. That's two. Three. Hmm. It's close. Okay, that's pretty cool. Um, you're looking, you're looking for like poison specifically, though, right? Yeah, I think plants with the poison uh, traits, so I can make basically poison. Got it, got it, got it. Okay. But if she comes across something else that's helpful, obviously I'll, I'll take that. And, you know. <sighs> I mean, like, if, you know, if, like, if I was looking for, you know, a sapphire, I'm not going to turn down a diamond. Oh, fair enough, fair enough. Darius is going to succeed at a cost on two of those checks, the 17 and the 19. Mm. Oh, you're going to succeed on both of them? Yeah. Okay. All right, here's the first one. Uh, you lose two hit dice. Oh, wait, sorry, that's the wrong one. Um, This would be... No, that's the right one. Uh, you lose two hit dice for each hit dice that you're unable to lose. You gain a point of exhaustion. All right. And since this is happening during a downtime and you get all yours back, you would lose those two at the end of the long rest, essentially. Oh, I'd be, okay, uh, so I'd be down. Yeah, yeah, Okay. Right, you'd be down two. And then the other one is unlucky, so that would also apply uh, after the after the long rest. Hmm. All right, well, it is what it is. Um, all right, so then... Oh my god, what a what a find, Ayla, holy shit. Um, okay, so you find, uh, two interesting things. A one, you find, uh, you find some knockwood. Uh, knockwood is essentially, um, according to legend, when a fake creature makes their home inside a tree, occasionally they may pass along some of their unpredictable and capricious nature into the wood itself which can be unlocked with a simple knock. This is referred to as a piece of knockwood, an enchanted chunk of tree, identifiable by, by a faint humming that can be heard from it at all times. Uh, when the power is literally tapped into, it can allow the user to defy fate in small, but some way, uh, sometimes crucial ways. So you can make this into a trinket, essentially, that if it's on your person, um, if you're ever forced to make a roll at disadvantage, you can uh, use your reaction 
to knock on the piece of wood. Uh, and if you do, you roll normal instead of at disadvantage. Uh, but after that, it loses any magical powers that it has. So it's like a, a one use like trinket that you can make from it. Um, but it would also have crafting applications related to um, essentially luck and um, well, mostly it would just be related to luck. So luck and dice rolling, essentially. Uh, and then the other thing you find is uh, Autumn Skullcap, uh, which is a very poisonous mushroom. Um, so it can make an ingestion, ingestion poison um, that is a DC 20 constitution save. Um, but it doesn't take effect for 1d4 hours. But when it does... Uh, the target takes 2d20 poison damage, loses all their unspent hit dice. Um, but if they succeed, they take half the damage and lose one hit die. So that's what that does. Anyways, I'll get you those items and put them on your sheet. Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Uh, I would like to look for medicinal herbs. Okay, so you are also going to be uh, searching around? Yeah. Okay. All right, give me just a sec. Mm. Oof, that formatting. Oh, my God. All right, hold on. Uh, okay, so go ahead and give me a Wisdom Survival check, uh, Tiernan. And you, are you doing the forest or the road? I mean, I feel like I'll have more success with the forest, so I'll try that. Okay. Alright. Mm hmm. Okay. Um, so you find... This is kind of tricky, because I feel like you'd probably have to travel with Ayla to do this, because you just wouldn't know what you're looking for um, without, like, a native. Do you know what I'm saying? So are you guys willing to do this together, or...? Yeah, she, she okay. would be. All right. Do you trust a uh, vampiric Vistani? Uh, for some reason, yes, but I do think we need to figure out what's going on with that, because by all accounts, you shouldn't be able to be one. Yes, it does seem rather odd, doesn't it? I, uh... Unless unless the one that... Which one was it you said that, that bit you? Did, did I don't know if he ever said his name, but it was definitely the charming one. Uh, I imagine we've conferred notes since traveling yeah. all this time. And if you were talking about a handsome, dark-skinned one, probably would have seen yeah. Peterson. Yeah. I believe, or it was Peterson that bit me, though I did not necessarily see him do it. Uh, Just how could... He should be a spawn, right? I, I don't... You shouldn't have been able to contract vampirism. Well, I don't remember much after that. It all went black, but... Um, I don't know what happened when I was out. But I can tell you I feel nothing but disgust and hatred for both him and Strahd, or the devil, so... I, I mean, I guess let us know if it changes or starts to. I don't know. If it just changed suddenly, I don't think he'd want to tell us because that would sort of out you. Well, you could keep asking me. I mean, I... That's I'm true. Crap at, I'm crap at lying. So. I'm I'm pretty good at telling if people are lying too. So. Oh, let's uh let's find your herbs, shall we? Yes. All right. So, 
Uh, best you guys are able to do for the medicinal is you find a few elm trees and uh, Ayla, you know that the bark of an elm tree has medicinal properties. This is what you want. The bark. And you shave it off like this. Okay. Um, so, I will go ahead and add that to your guys' sheet. Now it's a it's a bark it's an elm tree so you could take a lot of the bark off of the tree if you if you want. Yeah, well I got got, got a shit ton of daggers. So okay. um, go go ahead and give me uh, give me four d six and that if you're willing to just completely strip every useful bit of uh, bark off of these trees, give me four d six. That'll be how many units of it you're able to get. It's all you turn. Okay, so we got that. We got this. Go to inventory. Inventory, good. All right. Um, so Ayla has the autumn skull cap and the knockwood. Mm -hmm. Oh, did we get that roll yet, or? Do you, do you want to make it or do you need me to? What is your. It was just 46. It's just 46. You just need a, okay. just need a roll, number roll. Bam! Look at All that. Right. Four, 14, 14 units of uh, elm bark. All right, I'll add it to your sheet. All right, so. Uh, elm bark all by itself, at least in Barovia, um, you can brew it into a tea that when consumed, it will heal 1d4 hit points. Um, however, it has a hey. cooldown. It cannot be used again until a creature completes a short rest. Is it an action? Uh, yeah, I mean, it would count as a potion. Um, you'd have to brew it ahead of time, uh, kind okay. of thing. Yeah. But it doesn't seem to have an expiration, so you could like brew the tea and then put it into a vial, and you have a one d four emergency heal potion. Does it? Does it get stronger as time passes, like tea does? Oh man, just the flavor, just the flavor. Oh. Um, which is <laughs> gross because it's made of elm bark. Um, when you're or, craving that elmy flavor. Or each each unit of elm bark would count as a medicinal ingredient for your other stuff. Because it has the property medicinal. Uh, also, that mushroom is worth fifty gold. That autumn skull cap. So I don't know if you want to use it or sell it. But I really want to like grind it up and find a way to slip it into uh, Lady Wagner's tea. Because I just think that would be awesome. <laughs> I mean, yeah, could be up to forty damage. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I I'm making inroads with the maid, so. Fair. Um, also keep in mind that this setting, right, it, just because you're in charge or something doesn't mean you have video game boss stats. Sometimes it does, but sometimes, uh, you know, regular ass people rise to position the power. Yeah. She, uh, could, yeah. she could make the save and still die. Correct. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah. If they don't have, if they don't have enough HP. Yep. Um, all right, cool. So, um, let's see. Does anybody else have any downtime activities that they were doing? Or are you just kind of resting and chilling and waiting? Um, can Mac work on stuff while she's... Can companions work on uh, crafting? Uh, yeah, I don't... I guess I'd, I don't see why not. If they, uh, you know, if you're keeping them alive and they have skills and stuff, yeah, they could they could work on stuff. Hmm. Um, like if they have like the tool proficiencies and whatnot, yeah, for sure. Yeah, she has alchemy supply uh, proficiency, and mm -hmm. uh, I guess she was going to be going into tincture apothecary. So yeah, mm -hmm. I guess if Tyrion and, and Ayla are going going on this field trip of looking for herbs and stuff, Mac would join them. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, so she's also going to be looking for some herbs. All right, yeah. go ahead and give me a wisdom survival from Mackenzie. Ooh, okay. 
Uh, let's see. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> It's not, it's not super helpful, but it's still pretty cool. Um, while out with the other two, she discovers um, a small tree with a golden sheened bark. Um, if you are willing to... Uh, well, yeah. Um, it's going to definitely be pain, you know, painful for the tree, but um, you can take the sap from this tree um, and it is the... Uh, main ingredient in a tincture called elf hazel which um will cause scars to fade if uh if applied as like a like an ointment oh you can make darius all pretty again um it also <laughs> has the it also has the medicinal trait as well okay Ooh, I make tyranid all pretty uh so yeah you could kill the tree um, to get three portions, or you could uh, leave the tree um, able to recover and take one portion. Uh, probably take one portion. <laughs> okay. I don't. I don't know if, if Mac would be on board with uh, wholesale destroying the environment like that. All right. Fair enough. I don't know, that's, a, just, that's just my thought. Um, at least one dose, just to test out with NC what it's capable of doing. Do not have to worry, Mackenzie. The uh, tree will recover. As she helps her stab you know, <laughs> the, uh, the the trunk and tap it. Right, yeah. I drain its blood. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Alright, so it has the medicinal and regenerative uh, traits. Meaning that later on, it could be very useful in higher level um like regeneration potions and shit like that um but now it could be used as medicinal or you could just use it to make uh a portion of elf hazel all right okay and i'll get you i'll drag that onto your sheet oh so. okay cool yep mm -hmm. Okay, Mackenzie. All right, any other uh, things that are going on? Yeah, Luke just asked Davian. Um, so, what's it like being a were raven? Oh, uh, he he says um, it is a it is a great feeling, uh, a freedom, uh, the ability to fly and see much is um is a gift that i cherish every day but the blessing of the raven um is not for everyone for uh it is in the nature of such a, a totemic beast to um to go and uh i don't want to say steal uh but to acquire um, trinkets and knowledge, um, but also to share such things with others. Even if your base instinct is of a more selfish nature, uh, the longer you live with this, uh, the blessing of uh, the raven, uh, the more prone you are to acts of uh, altruism and uh, you feel an obligation to guide and protect others. It is in many ways the opposite of the curse that affects you and your people. Your curse calls out for meat, or the hunt, or beer. Even if you are, in your hearts, a good man, when the curse of the wolf is upon you, it will force you to do things that you may regret. And those that give in to those feelings, that embrace them, 
they lose themselves to become driven by a lust or violence they feel strengthened by the fear they cause others but you already know this to be true certainly I I know I know although when you think about it whether it, is a, whether it is a curse or a blessing, these gifts were given or forced upon. Aren't we all shackled by them? Driven by them. You can be a selfish man. Sooner or later, your aware raven curse could forced an obligation to protect and guide, despite you yourself not wanting to. Of course. And for some, that is a fate worse than death. You end Power up losing... Power frequently requires sacrifice. Go on. Oh, I was... I admire it. I admired how you and your family has lived with it. And it seems to me you are a good man. We try our best to be light in the darkness for others. My people and yours have never seen eye to eye. But we stay out of each other's way. And your people, as to mine, try to retain some amount of independence from the Dark Lord. That I shudder, is. I shudder to think what Baralvia would be like. Should the wolves of the north bend the knee to the devil? Maybe with them, as he points to the rest of the party. Perhaps we won't have to. Ever. Mm. This alpha of yours. I was under the impression that the wolves of the north were led by a man is a woman uh, taking control of the pack think of her as a sub leader that i myself follow under someone who what has happened to emil from what i've gathered in front what little conversation I've had with your Muriel. He was last seen at Castle Ravenloft. Hmm. That does not bode well. It doesn't. A part of me wants to hope that perhaps he is still alive, but the more practical part of me understands that he may as well be dead. Hmm. I would be dead too if my family had given up on me, as you seem to be giving up on a meal. Hope is something that you have until you give it up. True. But, hope can also be seen as bait, to drag you further into the darkness. No, I cannot allow myself to think that way. Hope is light in the darkness. And perhaps it leads you deeper in, but it is light.
nonetheless. It is better to move forward towards light than to give up and wander in darkness. Very well. You have your opinion. I have mine. But we will get you your stone back. So, before we fast forward through to the next day, were there any other uh, long rest slash downtime things that you wanted to take care of? Go once, go twice. Alright. So we head into the next day. Alright. Um, when you awaken on Wednesday the 30th of August, um, it is to hear... Um, I guess you guys are probably camping out in the... Um, the factory floor because they just don't really have you know any guest rooms or anything um okay. yeah um let's see i guess they would have like you know what they would have they would have had before they got killed workers that worked the land and stuff so yeah you know like old timey like plantations where there would be like smaller houses on the property Mm -hmm. um you guys would probably shacks. be put up in one yeah yeah you guys would probably be put up in one of those like worker shacks kind of thing it ain't great but it keeps the rain off of you and stuff like that um so yeah you guys wouldn't be at the house to hear this but when you guys um finally head over to the house um davian would uh call down to you from the second floor window where everyone's having breakfast and say uh I hope you are ready for some very interesting news. Muriel has arrived, and she has borne witness to the horrors that took place in Valakai. If you would like to eat first, it might be best, though it could be hard news to take with food in your stomach. Might as well tell us now before we eat. Okay. Sounds like uh, it's going to be bad all around. Uh, Muriel says, um, The day is not yet uh, ruined by weather, but it will be by my news. Let us walk through the field out of earshot of nosy children. Uh, and then she uh, kind of heads downstairs to, to meet you guys. Um, she does bring with her a basket of uh, bread and cheese in case you guys wanted to eat. Definitely. She says, uh, where do I begin? What do you know? When did you leave? I remember Luke. Is what Davian told me your name is. Uh, when you came to retrieve the supplies that was the last I saw of you uh, did you did you leave after that we spoke to old man Richard at the tavern seems mm. he's laying on more than being just a drunk old dude he said he yes, was willing I, to help us fight the vampires but that we would lose people in the process I see oh I have much to tell you uh, and you can see that despite her hard-boiled exterior, um, her eyes are doing that sort of wet pulsate that eyeballs do when the person wants to cry, but they're not going to cry. When they've seen such horrors that they don't want to speak of them, but they're going to speak of them. So, like, anytime, like, you look at Mackenzie, basically, now. Oh, <laughs> damn. <laughs> damn. I mean, he, hey, it's not wrong. <laughs> Oh, she's seen a lot. Um, I mean, she's seen some shit even before she came here. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. All right, so let me get some appropriate music for her to tell you this wonderful tale of the things that you missed. All right, 
Let's see. All right. So you guys left um, the day of the festival. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I think it'd be like. Uh, yeah, you could hear the um, you could hear the like sounds of the festival. Or something. It yeah. was some was it new? I thought it was morning. No, because we woke up a little bit later, and then uh, yeah, it was around like noon time when we pretty much left town. Okay, so she says, um, as the afternoon began to advance, and the festivities, if that's what you could call them, were underway. There was an unease amongst the populace, as if they knew something terrible was waiting for them, but they had no means by which to escape from it. The rains came, and at first it was not enough to stop the festivities, but it threatened a heavy storm. This put the Baron in an ill mood, for he he had had many trained in uh, survival and uh, such tell him, assure him, that the day would be clear and uh, suitable for the festival. As the sun was setting, he gathered those together in the square those who tried to avoid the festival were rounded up by the guards. The great effigy of the sun was presented and there was no small amount of wonder to see it, for it was beautiful. But as the Baron lit the torch to light the effigy of a blaze, the signal in, the setting of the sun, and the end of his people's time here in Barovia. The skies opened up. Storms, thunder, lightning, rain, a deluge. The torch extinguished. All were drenched. The Baron commanded everyone to stay. He tried again and again to light the effigy, but the elements would not allow it to happen. Someone in the crowd let out a nervous laugh, and you could see the last bits of sanity break on the Baron's face. He had the man seized. He tied him to the back of his horse and he dragged him through the street until the man fell apart. His screams joined with the mocking laughter of lightning and thunder and wind and all watched in horror And then someone from the crowd said, Enough is enough. And they threw a rock and it hit the Baron, knocking him from his horse. It was Bedlam after that. Brother against brother, citizen against citizen. The stress, the angst, the fear that had been building all this time boiled to the surface. There was so much death and so much killing. And as that sun set from the shadows, they came. And as some tried to flee the square, they were taken. Erwin and Danica and her children, I managed to get them to safety. That's good. But Richard was gone. And 
when I found him again, he was as a madman. Crying out in defiance. He had a great giant made of metal and stone and wood. A golem. And he was fighting the vampires. With him, trying to save those that he could. I do not know what happened to him. For I myself was finally spotted in my raven guise and pursued. I hid. I hid in the church. And many had hid there as well. But Father Lucian, he prayed over the, those huddled in fear. But they came to the church. Ludmilla Anastasia and the devil himself. They locked the doors. You you said Strat himself. Yes. The devil himself. Yes. Father Lucy demanded that he stop he called to mind what a, what a ruler is that his reputation is the treatment of his people that he should lead by example and he should carry in his heart no matter how black mercy for those in his care and the devil laughed at him. He picked him up as if he was a child. And he fed upon him. And as Father Lucian died in his arms, he said, You will rise tomorrow night to help me guide those who remain that they never waver in their loyalties again. And then he set the body down on the altar with such care as the people hiding in the church were not. I fled, I fled through the through the bell tower and the way. I didn't know what else to do. I have I have come home a bearer of ill tidings and dark news. But before I did I returned to the town see what the morning brought. The Lady Wachner has seized control of the city. She yep. is unopposed. Though Isaac Strasny was not found, or at least his body has not been found. The Baron, his wife, and their son were crucified in the streets. So remember when I said we should have killed the lady when we had the chance? Yeah. Erwin and Danica have been... Are they are fine, I suppose. Lady Wagner believes that commerce is the lifeblood of any settlements. And that the tavern is the heart that pumps the blood. She has... ...fairly compensated them for damages during the festival. And she looks disgusted when she says that. Did, uh, did she close the city? Is... No. The gates are now all wide open. And what guards survived 
and swore loyalty to her are joined with her mercenaries and they will begin to patrol the roads in 10 days time they will march to Kresik demand the city oh, that the town of Kresik reopen and rejoin Valakai by order of the devil himself that's just all out war Mir, do, do you know if Irina's brother made it out of the city? I believe he had already left. Before the he was planning on heading yeah. back there. We need to let him know before he does. I'm pretty sure news may reach him before we do. So... We and, have to get the stone. And to your point, Luke, and even if we did kill Lady Wachner, then what? We'd have all of that coming down right on top of our heads. At this point, it doesn't even matter. We now have a time frame to when they'll march over to Crescent. So, what now? You guys want to stop what we're doing? No. Go back. I'll add uh, Valakai makes demands of Kresik to your calendar. <laughs> Thanks, Kresik. No worries. So, I want you to stay well informed and abreast of the situation. Here's an idea. We clearly can't do the Galt history. So our best bet. When you say that, Muriel says, the Galt history? Do you seek destroy it or simply pilfer what treasures are laid in offerings before its roots uh we can say we spend the next like half hour uh, discussing oh. with her the same stuff we talked about oh, okay again. so she tells you that um the trinket you seek it might simply be laid before the tree the faithless worship it as some sort of divine being they place many such trinkets at its base so maybe we don't even have to destroy it. We just have to find it and get the fuck out of there. So do you want to do the stone and that? I mean, if you are willing to retrieve the stone, I will help you find this trinket. And I will guide you to the hill. Anything to, to not feel so useless. Good. It's not your fault that you're only one person, Miriam. There are others in the order. I could not get them to do anything. They would not lift to talon nor feather nor blade. They said that only we only needed to make sure that ours and ours alone were cared for, that this was larger than anything we could have done. This is the great beast that is the devil rising at last from his long slumber. For 40 years, he left the people in peace, but now... I don't know what he has planned. I am afraid. I think there's But something. I need to do something. Maybe just time we take up that invitation, then. You want to go into the lion's den after hearing all of that? And as you say, maybe we should take up that invitation. Uh, you see, um, flying awkwardly in the pale morning light, uh, looking absolutely exhausted, but also so fucking adorable, uh, is an impassioned bat messenger. <laughs> oh, how far do it? <laughs> Oh, if it, it's better bad. I swear to God, this uh, lands within ten feet. I'm killing it. Okay, it uh, <laughs> it, it releases from its uh, its cute little feet, um, a scroll that falls, um, towards you guys, and then it starts uh, flying off. Do, do you shoot it? I mean, it's about fifty feet up right now. No, I, I can't reach it. <laughs> okay. Here I guess there's a little sweat drop of relief, and it's like thinking to itself in B speech. Guess I'm not getting a tip, uh, and it starts to fly fly away. 
Uh, does anybody try to catch the letter, or do you just let it fall to the ground? Darius will catch it. Nice. No metagaming from this guy. He's like, what's a, what is a, what's a, what's an exploding glyph? I don't know. All I right. don't know about magic. <laughs> exactly. Excellent. Good I'm, job. I'm a mother. Um, all right. So you, 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 you snatched it out of the air. Open it. Uh, okay. Uh, you see that it has a wax seal. The wax seal bears the mark of Castle Ravenloft. And um, as you open it, I will I will share it with you. Uh, let's see. Uh, I guess I'll make you the owners because it's yours now. Well, I'll make you observers. I wouldn't want you to forge anything. There we go. Oh, All right. Uh, <laughs> so his handwriting ain't great, but you know accessibility is very important to me. So I will read it, the letter to you. Um, it says, <clears throat> I understand you would like to meet. I have been watching you closely. Your many trials, tribulations, and sorrows have brightened my night and reignited my interest in the world. Thank you. In reciprocity for your inadvertent inspiration I would gladly meet with you to discuss at length whatever you like join me for dinner at my castle in three days time please do not disappoint me the lady Wagner can provide transportation if time is limited and you don't know how you were able to read it in his voice since you've never heard him talk before, but that's <laughs> just what happens sometimes. Um, so I'll add that to your calendar. Let's see. <sighs> that's a Saturday night. Uh, go. We would likely have to leave now for Valakai. We would. To get oh, this um, Arius, can you pass me the letter, please? Why? I just want to see it. Insights. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> well, you know what? I'm using my DM inspiration. I'm, no, I'm not. That's, that's, that's too much. It's a precious resource. Not using it. You really want to insight check me? <laughs> uh, I'm very Wait, curious is it, is this... what you want to do with the leather. Sure, I'll hand Secret, it over. Right? I'll hand it over. Oh, you oh. just hand it over? Okay. I hand it over. Alright, All right. thank you. Loot will read it over. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He then tears it in half. Thought mm. so. Didn't see that coming. So, oh, the stone? Mm, I don't think so anymore. If what he is doing... We is have if... literally walked here. If we go back now, what would be the point? If we don't answer this, then what? Dude comes you... after us? Yeah. Yes, Luke, you read the invitation like it is just that, like it's voluntary. I do not think he says all that he means. I mean, this it, time it was just a cute little bat that delivered it. Next time it may be six vampire spawn that decide to follow up. Yes, this is no invitation. This is a summons. We are this close. We are literally over the, we are that direction I where know. Yes the Hill is. I know. We can uh, choose just to emphasize to... this point. Uh, Luke, Luke. To, well, I don't think anybody's gonna trust you with paper. Luke demands somebody pulls out the map. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> As you pull out the map, Muriel says, "It's such a bad map." Everyone keeps telling us this. Yeah. The point you know is, where a better one is. We'd, we'd I can't we'd... really carry a lot of gear on me. I just have the map committed to memory. We're close to Yesterhill. Mm. We know a ways to strip the devil of his powers. Mm. A way we to have... begin to do that. Well, yes. And plus, you guys are gonna end up wanting him dead either way. Accepting this invitation is about is the same as admitting that there's nothing you can do. You will obey whatever he says. So, if you want to show some sort of resistance, disobey it. 
oh, okay, let's 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 run this out. So we ignore the invitation. Three days pass. The dinner happens. He gets cold. He gets pissed. What do you think is going to happen to us after that? You think he's going to let that slight slide? You don't think we will be hunted, as uh, Darius said, first by uh, his spawn, then perhaps by his brides, then perhaps by himself? Well, you can make him work for it at the very least. <laughs> Plus, you're already a dead woman either way. <laughs> and you are not. I'd be lying do, do you if think? I... Go ahead. Do you think Mackenzie wants to do that? Do you think Izzy wants to do that? Be hunted? They're going to be hunted one way or another. They almost died the first time. It was only by the grace of mercy exactly. by the vampires they got to let go. I think refusing the invitation of the man who is literally bound to the land here is not a good way to stay alive. Yes, <laughs> this bat knew where to find us. We are not hidden from his sight. Then we can use Yesterhill as an as an excuse as to why we were late. I, I cannot. And she just kind of waves you off and just gets frustrated. Mm. You've aban you've already abandoned these people once with their problems with the stone. Why do it again now? I've abandoned nothing. Well, not you, of course. I meant the rest of them. Devin, what do you think? Are you gonna ask Davian? Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, yeah, Davian. I'm assuming he was quiet. here as well. Da yeah, Davian's remained quiet the whole time. Um, he tells you that um, you have the right of it. This is not an invitation. This is a summons. This is a challenge. As much as I want the stone returned, if you refuse him, you make your declaration. With that decision, you tell him that you stand against him. If you're and... ready to make that declaration, then do not go. But if you are of a mind that can see further than the end of your snout, uh, he, he stares at uh, Luke while he says that, you might understand that this is an opportunity to and speak with your enemy to learn what it is he has planned for you to perhaps for once have a chance to understand why you are here if you survive the encounter I beg your return to help with the faithless and the stone but while you are here Using my home as a sanctuary and my family as allies, I do not want to be associated with people who have drawn such ire as you may from this rejection. Anna, you're the one who keeps saying that you want to be ruler of this place. Do you think it'd be smart that we say no to him now and make them play their flag? You really want my input now? You're the one who keeps saying that we're fated. We need to go to the castle. We need to stop running away from everything. And we need to face it. Well said, this, Anna. This wolf is poison. He is afraid, and he has his own agenda. This raven also has his own agenda. We need to figure out what ours is. And I need you to wake up, Darius. I need you to wake up, Tiernan. I need you to stop watching and wake up and do something. This is my home. Valakai is in ruin. You told me to stop, and I was going to mitigate all of that. And she just starts crying and leaves, goes back to the house. Ayla will follow. 
Mm. I feel like with you walking off off screen and this heated uh, um, discussion uh, kind of simmering uh, at a boil, is a good time to end the session. Woo! All right. Juicy. Very juicy. So, uh, yeah, so uh, busy, busy, busy. Lots of things happening all at once. Um, you guys have a whole week to discuss on Discord what you will do next. Couple things to remember. One, uh, it's okay to have strong opinions, uh, but this is still a group uh, group game, so the majority is going to control where the story goes. If at any point you're like, my character would not do that, then you will need to make a character to play that would do that because uh, I can't run two separate campaigns. Um, I completely respect roleplay decisions. Uh, for example, Eastmark was like, I got to do my own shit. I can't, I can't just wander around with you guys. Um, and he left. Um, if your character found themselves in that position, we would work on finding a replacement uh, and making a replacement character for you to bring that could uh, do what the majority wants to do. This is a sandbox game. This is the gothic horror game. Odds of getting a happy ending very low. Um, no way to five star the campaign. No wrong decisions. No alignment system. Whatever you guys decide to do, as long as you do it together, that is where the campaign will go, and that is what we will do. All right. I do not sit in judgment uh, of what you guys are doing. I am simply the horror Skyrim. And I'm just trying to make the world uh, move and turn uh, as you guys move through it. So whatever purpose you find for yourselves, whatever goals you set for yourselves, that is your business, not mine. Um, I'm just here to mitigate, essentially. And also make your lives just miserable um, by constantly introducing more and more terrible... Uh, terrible moving parts uh, a to plus, this a plus. I know yeah. what I signed up for. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, that one of the things I really loved when I read the adventure is I was like, and then that happens? They already deal with all this shit. And then Jeremy Crawford like, yeah, bro, then that happens. I'm like, oh my fucking god. Yeah. It's one of um, the better adventures. Yeah, so um, I think one of the best parts of this adventure is the mounting tension. There's just more and more and more and more and more and if you are one of those groups that cannot make a decision, you will be washed away um, and buried by the avalanche of events that are just happening all around you. And even if you're one of those like alpha gamer, like SWAT team kind of groups, you're going to have to accept that you won't be able to five star this adventure. You have to pick your battles. You have to have a battle plan if you if you want to take that that play style if you just want to be a leaf on the wind blowing through this terrible story uh and and just bearing witness to the horrors that happen that is also a viable play style again there is no right or wrong way to do this as long as you are all doing it together so you guys need to find whatever middle ground you can um to move forward on um and then we'll go in whatever direction that happens to be all right. So, with that disclaimer out of the way, uh, quick announcements. We got Mythic Odyssey tonight. They're heading over to fan-made uh, island content, the Isle of Gold. I never got to run it for uh, Odyssey Prime, so I'm pretty excited. We're going to do some last-minute prep tonight at 7 to get ready for that. Um, tomorrow night, we're going to be prepping Outlaws of Alkenstar. Tuesday, Cyberpunk Red and uh, Pathfinder Abomination Vault. Wednesday night, we're going to try to grind out some more of that Dragon's Dogma. Yep. Yep. Uh, but we're going to start in August um, a four-player co-op playthrough of Baldur's Gate 3. Which nice. apparently, it's apparently some kind of Dungeons & Dragons game. So we're going to go ahead and try that out. Um, Thursday, Curse of Strahd Nightfall continues. Um, Friday, we'll probably have a vodcast. Saturday morning, Red Hand of Doom I keep saying there's two sessions left. Two sessions. This in, time. Uh, Red for, for, real, this for real, for real. For real? For real, for real. No play, play, for real. For real. Yeah. Um, no cap? 
No cap. Yeah, Saturday night, classic Strahd, um, which I don't stream, but they are, I believe, heading to Kresik. That's what those guys are getting up to. Um, kind of took me by surprise, honestly. Uh, and then Sunday morning, we'll be back here. So, does anybody have any announcements before we adjourn? Hmm? Uh, All right. Rhyme with Orpheus on Fridays. In case you, okay, uh, fair enough. You like watching. All right. And before we plug uh, Fanspiration, I want to point out that no amount of Fanspiration can help you out of the moral quandary avalanche that I've laid on you. All right. Anyways. <laughs> I hope everybody enjoys that, this Monday. Enjoy your holiday. Look, I'm a yeah. member of the Heroes of Prophecy. We manufacture <laughs> moral quandaries. I am. You, I am you, you invent your own moral quandaries. Fuck yeah. yeah. You're like, wait a minute. What if when I eat this vegetable, the vegetable feels pain? That's three <laughs> That's three sessions right there. Three yeah. sessions. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, I love it so much. <laughs> All right. Hope you guys enjoy your Sunday. If you are Americans, um, please don't blow yourselves up. Just don't do fireworks. You're a real asshole if you do fireworks. I'm just going to tell you right now. Um, that's my I'm hashtag not political, but if you do fireworks uh, on your on your private property, you're, you're a piece of shit. Uh, so just throwing that out there. Um, anyways, happy 4th of July. <laughs> and thanks everyone for tuning in. Catch you next time. He's so spicy. <laughs> <laughs>